Barrow Memorial Stadium in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Suburban Community Television is proud to present the PIAA Eastern Semifinals. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Friedman, along with me, Florian Kemp. And Suburban Cable has decided we're going to take care of business. We want to be up here. We want to see the Bucks go on. So here we are today. Suburban Cable proud to present this very, very special sporting presentation. Florian, this is a story of a team that three years ago in Wyoming Valley West, the Spartans were down nowhere. They were nowhere. They bring in a new coach from Conestoga Valley. He comes in there, puts a whole new program in there, and here they are in the Eastern Semis. Well, Bob, to anyone who knows Jimmy Cantafio, it's no surprise that he has turned this program around in three short years. Uh, Jimmy Cantafio, when he was down at Conestoga Valley, was a perennial powerhouse in the Lancaster Lebanon High School Football League. And of course, he went up to Wyoming Valley West. Uh, the program was in complete shambles. They couldn't even get enough kids to come out for a team, let alone fans, let alone community support. Jimmy started to go to work at the grassroots level, got involved with Little League football, got the kids together, got, went and recruited the best athletes in the school, and lo and behold, within three short years, he turns in a 12-0 record. Coming in today's game, he's got to feel good. However, he's got to realize that he's a slight underdog. But if there is a deciding factor, if this game stays close throughout the course, and especially in the second half, the coach will factor in a big way. He is a fine disciplinarian, a tactician. He is a guy that will put in trick plays, and he will throw things at the Bucks that the Bucks will never have seen a team from West Lake Homing put out before. Well, Wyoming Valley West features a legitimate Division I quarterback prospect in Marks LaTeX. He's number three. You'll watch him. He will sometimes line up in the shotgun. He will sometimes line up right under center. And he has carte blanche to run the ball himself whenever he wants to. If he doesn't see somebody over center, Waltz McConnish is good enough to give me for the scouting piece. If he doesn't see somebody over center, he will frequently take himself. He's a strong player. He's not, he's um, 6'1", 175 pounds, but he's like Corey Potter, very strong, very able to run the ball, and he's got an arm. I was watching him warm up, warm up and he can th really throw the ball. Another uh, person to watch is Brian Rocagrande. He's number 43. He's a running back. Supposedly very, very good running back. But the one thing that they have to be careful of is they are not a big team. But going through the lines, you see a lot of ones on the left side of the weight. They have nobody heavier than 248 pounds on this team. And West, of course, as we know, has got some beef. That's right. Obviously, uh, the success of West is going to depend upon the defense's ability to contain Zlatek. He's a fantastic athlete. That makes him doubly dangerous because if everybody's covered in the secondary, the only option he'll have is to run. He'll be able to cut. He'll be able to take advantage of the turf. Uh, that's another blessing. We've got a wet surface out there, but unlike what we would expect on a natural surface, muddy conditions, we've got a relatively mobile field out there, and Zlatek will be able to get himself out of trouble. You mentioned size of factor. I I certainly would not count that as a disadvantage because the point I want to make, Bob, just a few minutes earlier, Coach Contafio has recruited athletes. These kids are quick, they're up for it, emotionally they're high, and if there's a coach capable of getting a team to play over its head, it's Jimmy Contafio. The weather should not be a significant factor. The rain, that it rained all night, rained heavily, but it has stopped. It stopped at about 11 o'clock this morning, 10.30 this morning, and this, as you can see, is a turf field. We were down on the field. It is a very, very, it's a crown field, and the angle is very good. I walked on the field. It's cushiony. It is, it's a little squishy, but on this type of field, your footing will be good. So both teams will have the advantage of having excellent, excellent field uh, conditions. The wind is not a factor either. In fact, if anything, it's a non-factor because there is none. It's a typical November day. And you know what? It reminds me very much of a day that was played the game was played several years ago at Goodman Stadium. The West Faithful will remember. Easton came in. It was just this kind of day. And it was it was a great, uh, great win for West. Let's take a look. At, let's listen to the toss of the coin. Introduce yourself. Shake hands. Okay, back up, back up. On the toss, we know Wyoming Valley West won receiving down here. Is that correct? Down here. Down here? You're defending that goal. Okay, very good. Receiving here to scoreboard. You're defending kicking this way, right? 
Okay, guys, stand with your backs over there. Stand over here, please. So Wyoming Valley has won the toss, and they will get it. And this breaks a string of this breaks a string of West normally getting the ball first. Penton has been very fortunate this year that they won the toss, but Wyoming Valley will have the will take the toss and take the ball first. And the West crowd is up on their feet. A big crowd has come up the Northeast Extension to be up here at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium. A beautiful field, I might add. Bob, and before we get on, once again, on behalf of everybody at Spurman Cable, we want to extend our congratulations and best wishes to the Central Box West on their achievement this year. And, of course, we want to root them on this afternoon, and hopefully they'll come away successful so that they continue. But for both teams, congratulations also in order for the Spartans on the other side of the field as they get ready to receive the ball. A tremendous achievement. Both teams undefeated, well and no. So uh, it's an emotionally charged environment here. I should say that the conditions probably a little bit warmer than normal. It seems like somebody turned the uh, thermostat just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's been a cold week. We've seen a little snow. In fact, if you look on the yes. sidelines, you'll see the snow has plowed up the sidelines. They had a bit of snow up here earlier in the week. But today, the temperatures are in the upper 40s. It's almost a perfect day for football. The team has had their prayer. You see some of the crowd. We're ready for football. CB West will be kicking off. They will be going left to right on your screen as you see the school. And uh, Wyoming Valley West will line up. Let's see who we have back deep for them. It's like number 30. That's uh, uh, James Mack is the uh, back. And we have uh, Rocco Grande, one of the up back positions, as well as Matt Padavan. And of course, kicking off for, let's see who's kicking off, because we can't be sure all the time. <laughs> they change it around. It changes from time to time. Let's see who he goes at. Bob, the big win of the year for Wyoming Valley West over Berwick earlier in the season. Yep. And of course, you and I talked about it before the start of the, this afternoon's game. Uh, the biggest hurdle for the Central Box West, I should say, would be themselves. Uh, trying to avoid complacency as they have completely dominated their schedule. And so it'll be an opportunity for them now to really compete in a very competitive situation. This is Greg Ward kicking off for West. And he approaches the ball, and we are underway. A high kick. It'll come down at about the 15-yard line, taken by one of the upbacks to the 20 to 25, and brought down at the 32-yard line was Matt Jones. And it is there that the Spartans will take the ball over first and 10. Not a great kick right down the middle, high. Good coverage by the Bucks, and of course, respectable field position for the Spartans to start the opening drive of the first quarter. Mark Zlatek brings the uh, Spartans out over the ball. Backs are in the eye behind him. And there's Zlatek handing the ball off to Rocco Grande, and he is nailed after about a two yard gain by a host of white shirted Bucks. Let's give credit to that linebacking core and also the defensive line of the Bucks, Bob, for coming up big on that stop right there as the Spartans were about to take it right of center. Now they line up without a huddle. Trips receivers. Second down and eight. Ball at the 32 yard, uh, excuse me, 34 yard line. In the shotgun. Back to pass, under a rush, he steps up, and there he goes. He's spied by Armstrong, but he gets by him to the 40, and the 44-yard line, and just as we talked about it, he sees the opening, he wastes no time. He's up by Dave Armstrong, he'll get the first down. We talk about coaching, we talk about guts, we talk about doing the unpredictable. Contafio calls a second play, a complete different look than what the first play was, and you saw Zlatak back there in the secondary. The Bucks had everything covered. Zlatek had the only option to run. Indeed, he went, picked up the first down. First and 10. Handoff goes to Rocky Grande, and he is brought down nicely on the play. I believe that, was Bri that may have been Brian O'Hearn. Yeah, Brian O'Hearn coming down, doing a nice job of tripping up the ball carrier. Once again, another uh, no pickup on that. So it'll be second down and about nine, and again, no huddle. And again, he goes back to the shotgun look. And they'll take it and roll to the left. And he does a little shovel pass. And no way there. Dave Armstrong brings down Rucka Grande after a gain of just about two yards. They tried a little pass, but Armstrong was right there spying. And he made sure. So it's third down. And again, they will line up without a huddle. Armstrong able to read that play and pick it up. And only a pickup of three on that play. Trips wide right receivers. Now a man goes in motion. That's Pataman. Long count. 
Swatek takes it, he fires it over the middle, it's too high and it's incomplete. And that'll bring fourth down up and you would think, you would think that they will punt the ball, but again, you never know up here. They, so far, uh, uh, they have shown exactly what you talked about, Florian. No huddle, some surprise offenses, little shovel pass, little confusion, but West stands up and they will hold the ball. And what that all tells you, Bob, is a deep respect of the Central Bucks West defense, and once on that last play was team defense. Here we go. Zlatek is the punter, and they finally break out wide. Now, they show the pass formation, but he's back standing in pump formation, and he gets it away. It's an end-over-end punt that will drive him back. He'll take it at the 15. He's nailed right there. Here's another characteristic of Jimmy Contapio. You'll see great special teams, as you will with the Central Box West. Once again, <laughs> something that a lot of pro coaches would like to have in their group as well. Well, it's a good high punt. The coverage was excellent. Corey Potter had no shot to get any kind of yardage. He held on the ball, and that was a plus. And it was, it is there that the Bucks offense will take over. Let's take a look at it again, Florian. Here's the punt coming down as the return man is able to handle it, and great coverage there for the Wyoming Valley West Spartans, and that was Brian Rucco Grande. Double wing formation. Offside. Jumping off sides is Wyoming Valley West as they tried a little bit of a stunt, but they moved up too far. He may have been drawn off by the call from uh, Potter, so it'll be a five-yard penalty. It will go against Wyoming Valley. We have a dead ball foul. Red, repeat first down. Good strategy on the part there by the Bucks to delay that snap of the ball and, of course, to expect that their first time on the field, the defense of the Spartans, a little bit over-anxious. They're hungry to win that ball back, and this will keep them on their heels a little bit so the Bucks will be able to get off their first play. Dave Armstrong, the single setback. And it is to Armstrong. He's got two. He's got five. He breaks out in the wide to the 30 yard line. He's got the first down. Solo individual effort. You see Dave Armstrong with the help of his offensive line just barreling his way towards the sideline. Should have been tackled about two plays earlier before he went out of bounds just beyond the 30 yard line. But great determination and a great display of fine individual effort. And once again, a great push by that offensive line. We've talked about them all year long. They have done the job. They get a great block. And and then you got 255 pounds of muscle going through there, and it's an easy first down. First and 10 now backs in the eye, Armstrong the up back. Potter hands the ball off to Scotty Ward and bounces off, and he won't get anything. The pursuit was excellent by Wyoming Valley West, and Scott Ward could not get any yardage. In fact, he may lose a half a yard. So it'll be second down. Still call it 10 yards to go. That time, great play by the Spartan defense. As you can see, they focused on the ball carrier, and they are up on their toes as you saw about four maroon jerseys barrel in to come up with a big stop on that play. Second and 10. Just underway, nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Glad you could bring this, glad you could join us, rather, for this special presentation brought to you by Suburban Community Television. Backs are in the eye, second and 10. Potter. They can't up. He'll go around the left side. He'll get two. He'll get five. There's a flag. This is going to come back. He breaks it on the open. He's brought down about the 46-yard line, but I think this is going to come back, Florian. It's going to be unfortunate if it does, but a great call on that play there by the Bucks as Potter just showed some great agility and ability to maneuver around the outside on that far left side. He had some great blocking up front by the lineman, but obviously a penalty call from behind. And there's a hold around the end and it will cost them 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So that'll bring it back to about the, if it's where they're looking at it, it'll be bring it back to about the 23 yard line. It'll make it second down and about. Number 44. During the run, we have a hold. Number 44 to white, repeat second down. It's unusual, they don't usually give the number. That's right. Uh, Bob, we're seeing here on this first defensive series, the Spartans are doing real well, but it's obvious when you look at both teams matching up on their respective sides of the ball, we can see the size advantage for the Bucks. Oh, what yeah. the Bucks need to do is keep the defense on the field. They're going to have to wear them down, but right now the defense is fresh and they're keying all on the runners, but the key is the Bucks have got to sustain this drive. Man in motion right now, that's Warden. Handoff goes, and there's a flag down. Again, he's breaking outside is Armstrong. He's to the 40 and brought down, but I think this is going to come back. Great tackle and pursuit because Armstrong appeared as if he was going to go off to the races, and it looks like he might have been taken down by Matt Jones on the far side. Let's see what the call is. It was in the backfield, and that could be an illegal motion, possibly. 
It is against West, I do believe. Dave Armstrong that time looked like he was just about to be trapped in the embrace of the Spartan it's an defense. Legal shift. He galloped his way up and showing again great individual effort. But here we see an uncharacteristic series of plays for the Bucks. They execute fine offensively, but the lack of discipline with penalties of hurting their efforts. We have an illegal shift against White, still second down. Five yards. Calling an illegal shift. It's called by the back judge. Oh, Bob, I the referee, rather. Uh, mentioned it several minutes ago that perhaps the Bucks' biggest hurdle is going to be themselves. And we see in this drive that they're struggling. They've called good plays. They've had good individual effort. They've played well. But that lack of discipline with penal penalties, and just moments earlier we saw Coach Petten, how disappointed he is. Let's see if they can regroup and finally get a first down. Second down and long. In motion is Shackleton. Rolling to the right is Potter. He shows pass, now he cuts it inside. He gets it to the 25, to the right, okay. the yard line. almost gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. And they'll make a third down and about well. Nice size hole there created by the offensive line. And Potter again showing good running ability, weaving his way up, and then just getting down just short of that 30 yard. But what we're seeing is when they run wide, they're getting huge holes to run through. Even with the penalties, both runs that were called back were in excess of 15 yards. The one, of course, was helped by the hole. The other one was just an illegal shift. That was just pure block. What's there. causing that, Bob, is the muscle of the offensive line is blowing the hole open, and then the Bucks again with that speed, able to get by on the outside. Strong side right look. Now man in motion is Shackleton. Third and 12. Back to pass Potter. Got time. Loops. He got Warden all alone. Warden makes one block to go all the way. He cuts it to the outside and out of the inside. He's down to the 15 to the 14 yard line. Scotty Warden down the sideline all by himself. And he almost broke it. Great protection and great timing on the pass delivered by Zlatek. And it would have been a touchdown other than Zlatek getting in there and coming up with the tackle but a sensational big play and that's something that the Bucks needed on this first drive we talked about you got to keep that Spartan defense on the field and talk about a play as we see it here Potter gets back nice move great protection gets his stance fires the ball and just lobs it great placement and there you see the receiver wide open, gallops his way down the right sideline. That defense has got to be second-guessing themselves. Armstrong carries people to the 10-yard line, 11-yard line. He was hit it right behind the line of scrimmage and just bolted on. You can't tackle Dave Armstrong high. Well, you see right there, Bob, and this is what Coach Cantafio has instructed this team all week. Watch out for Armstrong. Watch out for this guy, you know. So obviously the defense is going to focus. You're going to need those passing plays. You're going to need Potter to come and run to create that <laughs> diversion so as to spread that defense apart. And watch him go strong right and Potter carry the ball himself. Put it in our strong stomach. He might not do it here, but we've seen it all year long. Of course, so does Coach Cantafio. In strong right look. Everybody bunching up in the line of scrimmage. It goes down strong off the left side. He's to the five. He's in a great touchdown. Oh no, he's the ball's on the ground. I beg your pardon. I thought he had the touchdown. I thought he had the touchdown. I thought so too. So we he was stretching to put the ball over and let's see what they got. Let's see what they've called. And it looks like no, I think they're going to say that the ground caused the fumble. I'm sorry, folks. I got a little carried away there. I thought he was in the end Don't zone. Don't feel bad, Bob. I was the with you on that The hand started play. going up from the official. It looked like he was. And it's once again, down. Dave Armstrong with great individual strength and determination just crunching his way towards the goal line. Well, let's we'll see the ground. The ground it. cannot cause a fumble. Now there. watch. There's He's hit one there. Hit, Let's see him go. Two hit. He'll he come right down. in front of you here. He comes over. He goes to the great protection. He's down of the ball. and boom. They no, no fumble. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Great camera work, guys. Great job. First and goal for Central Bucks West at the one. Armstrong. He's in. He's in. Dave Armstrong scores a touchdown. And West takes a six nothing lead with 5.09 to go in the first quarter. How appropriate the team's offensive leader and hero headed to Michigan gets the carry from the one and takes it in for the first points of the afternoon as the Central Bucks West maintain possession on their first offensive drive to score with 5.09 left to go in that first quarter. An absolutely great series of plays on that initial offensive series as they're about to attempt for the extra point. Kick is up. 
Yeah. The kick looks good. The kick is good. Patterson puts it through. So, with 5.09 to go in the first quarter, an 85-yard drive. Actually, longer than that, about a 115-yard right. drive when you consider the penalties. the penalties. They bring it through the big play. A huge pass from Corey Potter to uh, Scotty Ward. Now, let's talk about that. We've talked about Corey Potter all year long. Corey Potter has come of age. He has become a quarterback among quarterbacks this year. Started off a little tentatively. That pass was exactly where it had to be for a number. Granted, it was a beautifully devised play. Everybody's figuring they're gonna, the Potter's going to run the ball. Looks over. Warden sneaks out of his slot position into an area wide open. I mean, Florian, there couldn't have been anybody within 15 yards on either side of him. Gets downfield to the 11 yards. Warden to kick off. Yard left, and they take it in from there. Now, the key on that play, too, Warden, you know, when you're out on the field, Bob, you find yourself in that space. It's like, wait a minute, something's not right. I'm not supposed to be that open. But Warden was so anxious, but to his credit, kept his eye on the ball. A lot of times you'll see guys get a little anxious, even in the pros. They'll want to run before the ball comes to him, kept his eye on the ball, made the reception, and then carried up field for the big game. Ward with his second kickoff kicks a low ball that's picked up by an up back at the 30, and I think his knee may have come down there. Yeah, they're, they're calling it there. He, it was picked up by number 23, uh, Mahmoud Elbada. Very good, Bob. Thank you. I was going to wonder about that one. <laughs> and uh, I had trouble with the Smith name. So, okay. you know, these, these names I had no problem with. Now, but the um, Bucks can breathe a sigh of relief, but once again, you saw why Jimmy Cantafio wanted the ball first. He knows who he's up against. That's exactly. No huddle again. Backs in the eye. And expect him to gamble. He's got to gamble early if he's going to stay in the game. Slotic with a handoff and not getting back to the line of scrimmage was Rucker Grandi. There were all white shirts strung out and waiting for him. Well, of the 10 minutes we played, a little bit over 10 minutes in the first quarter, obviously, the Spartans defense on the field most of the time. You're seeing a refreshed, rejuvenated Bucks defense doing the job now. No, the huddle, no huddle again. Twins on the left side. Now man goes in motion. That's Padovan. So now you have trips on the right side. Snap goes back over the middle. It's caught by Padovan. He'll get about eight. Nine, maybe. It's LaTeX there showing some great precision passing under pressure and great hands there by the receiver covering over the middle. The ball was thrown a tad high uh, in traffic. Receiver goes up with two hands, pulls it down. Good basic football for the Bucks. Good defense. Good third, containment. Third and one. Again, no huddle. Into the line goes uh, Quarterback slot pick, and it's going to be close. It's going to be real, real close, and I don't think he got it. Depends on the spot of the ball. Yeah, we have the official coming in from the near sideline signaling, so obviously he had his eye on the ball. We'll see what the official well, I'll call. Well, tell you, he, where they spotted the ball, they gave him a real favorable spot. Let's Here's take the a look push. Again. Right down the middle. And it's there hard to tell th whether he's got it there or not. But they gave him a very favorable spot. I'm going to say he does have the first down by about the nose there of the There you ball. see the wall of Doylestown pushing back. No way. You're not getting in. Not without us punching your ticket, as you see. The, uh, let's see where the chains end up. We've got about more than yeah, that. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. So they get the first down. But you see, on a play like that, it sets it up for future short and fourth down situations because... The Spartans will show you a couple of times that they'll go for it on the ground. The next time, they'll line up a couple of receivers and go for a long bomb. First and ten. Again, the trip's left. Nobody in the backfield. Now man goes in motion. That's it. Frank Yosh in motion goes to the right side. Slot there. He'll carry it himself. There's a flag down. This may be an illegal uh, formation. It could be. As, uh, well, that's where it usually comes from. Let's see what we have. Let's see what the call is. He gained about a yard on the play, but let's see what, the, let's see what we have. Stadium with about uh, 6,000 fans here. Everybody's quiet, Bob. Legal procedure against the offense, so that'll take him back five. It'll make it first and 15. Just as they're starting to move the ball, they get the five-yard penalty. Of course, with Zlatek... You don't know because right. he's got such a great arm. Right, and on the other side of the ball, the first uh, offensive series of the Bucks, we saw them penalize quite a few We times. have six men on the line against Red. It is refused. It's a second down. They took the play. They took the play, and not a bad play because you have a gain about a half a yard. But the thing is, they know it's a lot of technique. He's going to complete it. He's going to complete it for 12, 15 yards. you got quad receivers here. 
trips in the slot on the near side. Some strange formation. That's, that's Jimmy Contapio. Now man surprised. goes in motion again. Yash goes to the right side. Long count in the shotgun. Slotek fires. It's called. Oh, oh what a great catch, catch by uh, Mark Baynard. Great throw. Inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. As the defender on West went for the ball, he tipped it, but Baynock with great concentration holds on, takes it down inside Buck territory to the 37. I was concerned there was still going to be a little bit of contact prior to the receiver getting his hands on the ball, thus uh, giving a pass interference, but no, just simply great execution. Now the handoff goes to Rocker Grider. He's got a little room and then he does. Oh. Little room and then he doesn't. As Ortiz meets him, Potter meets him, and they stack him up after about a four-yard game. Welcome to Bucks County, Pennsylvania, down here in Wilkesboro, or up here in Wilkesboro. And again, no huddle. I'll tell you, this takes a quarterback with some savvy to even do something Right, like this. and a coach that's able to devise these schemes and the athletes that are able to execute. Keep in mind, we think the Spartans are the underdogs, but they're moving the ball in their own way. Back about six yards behind the line of scrimmage. Latte takes it. Oh. It's you almost right see a, the hands. a double opportunity. It went through the hands of one receiver, and after it was tipped, you had one falling about. Once again, good timing on those runs getting down, and Zlatek, once again, under pressure again, holding his ground and not overthrowing the receiver, throwing it so that if the catch is not made, the ball cannot be intercepted. Good third, basic football. Third down and six, ball to 33-yard line. Zlatek standing back at his own at the uh, Bucks 38-yard line, five yards behind. Line, a man in motion, fat event. And I think we had an off jump offside by good, Wyoming Valley. Good timing call. And once again, tactically, you're seeing a team fundamentally very sound and very well coached. And oh, oh, it's going to be Tanger. No, as I said, the left side of the line jumped. And that's what created it. Dead ball. Ball start on the red. Yeah, I saw the left, uh, the left tackle come off of the stands. And, of course, West, seeing that, immediately jumps to the ball. Right. So it'll be third down now and a just shy of 10. Slotek. Now he has trips right again as uh, Padovan goes in motion that way. Slotek will run the ball himself, and he's not going to get anything. So it's fourth down and 10, and in this area, you wonder if they're going to go for it. Dave Even Armstrong and company right up the middle defensively just simply lassoed Zlatek as he tried to make the run upfield. But you see now the Bucks making some great adjustments defensively, Bob, and they're able to now cover those, I should say, unconventional formations that we're seeing out there on the field. Now, he's in punt formation, but again... Keep in mind who he is. You never know. It's Zlatek is the punter, and now there'll be a timeout call. Let's see who's got the time called the timeout as we have a timeout called and keep in mind Bob by West when you're on the opposition side of the 50 and you realize that hey wait a minute I'm the underdog in this game I've got a gamble the Spartans that we've seen are the team that can show a formation where you would not expect to see what happens well, let's take a break and we will be right back don't go away I'll never forget the first time my grandmother took me to the Fulton. It was exciting. But like everything else over the years, it just lost a lot of its splendor. So I thought that was the end of it. But then the whole community pitched in and made it shine again. Just look at her now. Tonight I'm taking my grandkids. We are back in a low kick, but a very good one, effective one inside the 10-yard line. He pooch punted the ball, and it just barely made it over the line of scrimmage. Did Zlatek. It was an ugly-looking thing, but it, it goes out of bounds at about the 9-yard line, and the Bucks have had terrible field position to start each of their possessions. I dare to say, Bob, you might see some pro scouts say, what the heck was that? Hey, it worked. But you just made the point. That's exactly right. You don't have players on the field try to do things that they're not capable of, and you don't try to do something you can't happen. Now what you do is you have your defense. If you're the Spartans, you try to create a turnover. You try to back that offense up. 
Now, this offense is not really the type of offense that typically makes mistakes, but you'd rather have them start out know. inside their 20. Hand up goes to Armstrong. He'll get about one or two. Dave Armstrong and everybody in the stadium expected number 34 to carry the ball. But again, you start depending on tackling number 34 and certainly number 22 or number 35 or number 25 is in your, is, you know, is, is you're in, in their rear view mirror as they turn the corner. So you got to be careful even down here. Normally inside the 20s, you look for Armstrong, either 20. If you're inside your own, if you're inside the other teams, we're inside a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. CB West with a 7-0 lead over Wyoming Valley West. Second down and about, actually got about three on the carry, so make it second and seven. Single setback is Armstrong. Potter under center. It is Armstrong. He's got three. He's got five. He's got eight. He's got ten. He's out to the 25 yard. And he carried half of these Spartan defense along with him. As Dave Armstrong, there's not more that you can say, not much more that you can say. Just look at number 34 and watch him go. And if you like a ride, a free ride, just jump on his back and he'll carry up field. But a great job again of the offensive line. Here it comes again. Look at the block. Should have been tackled. There's a hit. He still goes. Here comes a potential another one. He gets by that one, and he just keeps his center of gravity very low, and just when he falls, lunges ahead and picks up that big first down. And as we're within the final minute of the first quarter, if you're Jimmy Cantafia, if you're the Spartans from Wyoming Valley West, you got to say, wait a minute, we're only down 7 to nothing. My rights, Bob, you mentioned. Size-wise, experience-wise, Team-wise, talent-wise, the Spartans really don't match up to the Bucks. However, the game is the same for both teams, and what you're seeing is a great effort by the Spartans to keep the Bucks in check. Single step back again, jumping offside is Wyoming Valley West. And, I, and I'm watching it on the single setback. Armstrong is not in the backfield right now, I believe. Yeah, he's over on the sideline. He's getting a, some attention. I think he may have turf uh, burn on the. Uh, on his arm. Come on! Dunbar, encroachment, Red, the first. So right now, right now he's not in the backfield, but let's talk about real quickly uh, the Wilson brothers, Joe Wilson, John Wilson, Ben Carver, Matt Valaitis, and Adam, uh, Adam Damaran, as well as Greg Ward doing such a great job on that front line. Yeah, Armstrong's a big boy, but you've got to have the opening. I don't care how big you are. If they're in your backfield, you're going to get nailed, and that's a great job that being done there. So, second, uh, first and ten. Excuse me, set first and five. Ball at the 29-yard line. This started at the nine. And now we're going to have an illegal... Shift, it's going to go back five yards. Too much time. Too much time. So the Spartans again continue to be successful, disrupting the flow of play of the Bucks, and it has enabled them to stay in the game. Seven seconds to go. I have a dead ball. Delay a game against White. Still first. We talked about Bob the uh, artificial surface, and we said, you know. The Bucks are used to playing on natural surfaces, and obviously today, if we'd be playing on grass, uh, I felt that it would favor the Bucks and a fellow like Dave Armstrong, that every time he goes to the turf, that fall is that much more punishing than if it would be on a nice, muddy field. Well, Armstrong is back. He's a single setback. This should be the last play of the first quarter. Shift into the eye. Warden is the tailback. It's a pitch to Warden. He's got some good block. He tries to go around the corner. We're going to have another flag. I'm getting real tired of these flags, Corey. They have Paul Fiskaric making a stop behind the line of scrimmage there for the Spartans. Of course, the advantage this afternoon, Bob, when you play on the field, you really don't have to wash the uniform. <laughs> it doesn't get muddy. Well, there's going to be a penalty, and this is the end of the first quarter. It's going to take CB West back. So while they mark that off, let's hear the call, and then we'll go to break. It's a hold against CB West. We'll take a break and come back for second quarter action. As I believe, level, level now. let's hold it here for just a minute. I'm not sure if you can end the quarter on this penalty. Hang on one second. One thing I want to say, this is a playoff game, and I'm, I'm not being on either side. One thing that drives me nuts is an officiating crew who is flag happy. Mm -hmm. And I think we got one today. Right. Well, I'll tell you, that'll disrupt the game. Uh, as I always say to people, what I... Number 44 in the light with a hole. We'll have one untimed down. Okay, you heard the call there. But, Bob, is what I say to people, what I know of line play in football, it's essentially wrestling. 
Yeah. And it's virtually impossible to find a play where there's no holding. And I'm not trying to be on exactly. homer here. I mean, they've caught it on both teams, but it's, and it just disrupts the exactly. flow of the game. Let these kids play. Let I them mean, play. It, you know, a hold. That's it, part of the game, and they know the how game, to. I realize that, but flag after flag after flag. These are two teams that are 12-0 and 0 for a reason, and it's not because they're undisciplined. That's right. So this will be the first play, the last play of the first quarter, barring another penalty. Going to the right is Potter. Goes around the end. He slips down and around the 17-yard line. Now that will finish the first quarter. A quarter that is seen. The only score of the game by the Bucks of Central Bucks West. When we come back, it'll be third and about 15 yards to go for the Bucks. As we go into the second quarter, we'll take a break and be right back. Don't go away. Someone once said, we all come into this world alone and we leave the same way. But in between, we have the chance to connect and help each other, to find ways you can do something to connect with the people in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. back as we begin the second quarter of this PIAA Eastern semifinal game between Central Bucks West and Wyoming Valley West here at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Bob Friedman along with Florian Kemp proud to bring you this very, very special game brought to you by Suburban Community Television. Proud to bring it to you as a public service to the community. The situation is this. It is going to be I said it's third and 15, it's going to be second and about 20, actually. I was wrong on that, as it was first and 25, after the flags, after the flags. And the ball is still resting at about the 17-yard line. Second and 20, Potter with the ball uh, under center. Armstrong is the single setback. On second down. It's Potter, he's got a hole. He's got five, he keeps his footing. He breaks it outside of the 32-yard line. No flags, close to the first down. He'll be about two yards shot. Great individual effort there by Potter in the offensive line again, blowing the doors open, allowing Potter to get upfield. But now you see an interesting change in strategy. Just as the Spartans have pretty much shut down Dave Armstrong at times, you see the Bucks when they shift to Potter, Bob, how effective his individual play can be. Not only can he throw, but he can run and make something happen. Well, the left side of the line just opened up a monster hole for him. And then the strength of Corey Potter, it's tough to bring him down. He is so elusive and so strong. Third down and about three. Make it about two. It goes to Armstrong. He's got the first down. He's over the 35 to the 38-yard line. Dave Armstrong, great blocking by the left side of the line once again. And Armstrong follows and gets the first down. So they will get a fresh four with 11-11 to go in the second quarter. The Bucks leading 7-0, and they're driving again. Real important drive here for the Bucks. This is their first offensive series of the second quarter. The first time they had it in the first quarter, they were able to get a downfield and eventually get some points on the board. But as you look at the scoreboard, they're only ahead 7 to nothing, and by no means are they in control of this game but they can establish control of it if they can walk, rush down the field and put some points on that Potter carrying the ball and he is smothered great defensive play by Kelly uh, with one of the tacklers and I believe Keating. Him, yeah, Chris yeah, Keating maybe Chris Keating and of course by, Ke uh, by uh, Glenn Kelly who came up from his safety position he will gain nothing on the play so that play got nothing for them as they were ready for Corey Potter there it'll make it second and ten Spartans, a team uh, just about to, to hold on, uh, just when the Bucks oh, look like they're about to blow something open and get a pretty good lead upfield or put some more points to the board. The Spartans come around and come up with a big play. Slow drive down. Titus is wide right. Potter hands the ball off to Armstrong. He won't get much as the center of that line will not allow it. So now yeah. you have your first legitimate third and long, non-penalty created created by the defense of the Spartans, who've done a great job. It'll be third and about nine as they're about the 39 yard line. Spartans there with a nice collective gang tackle right up the middle there. We talked about their disadvantage on the right side of the scale, but as a team, they're playing very well and of course very well coached. So third down and nine. Big play coming here for the Bucks. Armstrong set. Backs 
are actually split. Everybody's coming at him. Back to pass goes Potter. Great right. time. Nice pass over the middle. It's caught by Warden. You'll have the first down inside. And they gave a little taste of their own medicine. Two for two that time, as you saw everybody from the Spartans rush in. And I'll tell you, just like the uh, you circled the wagons in the old days of West, the Bucks offensive line was able to circle around and give Zlatek. Let's take a look again. As Zlatek is limping. He is having trouble with his right leg. He's playing defensive back. Look at the time he has. Passing lane, a perfectly thrown ball. Nice touch on the ball. Wharton again does a nice job. And here comes Zlatek. Zlatek banged up a little bit on that play. Now he, he can see he's bending over. He's got some pain in his leg. Let's see if that affects it through the rest of the game. Hopefully it's nothing serious. First and 10 after the pass to Warden. Single setback is Armstrong. Potter under center. Gives the ball to Armstrong. He's got two, he's got five. And he looks like he's getting nothing, and all of a sudden, he's got five quick yards. John Sweats. Well, it's a play as like, like the last one to Warden that really spreads that defense up. And of course, the formation, the Bucks had four receivers, two split on each side, and that really does a lot, Bob, to spread that defense up, opening up uh, some lanes there for Armstrong to march up. There's Latek, the camera on him. As Bob mentioned, just banged up moments earlier. Second down, of, actually around four, he got six on the play. Ball at the 38-yard line of the Spartans. Handoff goes to Armstrong. Armstrong's close to the first down. He'll have it down at the 33-yard line. Armstrong again barrels with four maroon jerseys on his back and just marches ahead, picks up the first down easily for the Bucks. Shackleton checks into the game. And you talk about how to wear a defense down, this is how you do it as the Bucks now crawl towards that Spartan goal line. Ball now inside the 35 to the 33. 35! Where it will be Excuse me, you're gonna have to back up a little bit. 8.15 to go in the half. The Bucks with the lead and the ball. They lead 7 up for the Wyoming Valley West side. Again, strong left side look. Potter with a long count. Maybe too long a count. Time might have expired on that. Once and again. Harry and Patton are just livid on the sideline. It's going to cost him five. It's going to be a delay game. Delay game. Now he has the way to the offense. No, Bob, the sign of a, a good team. And we keep going back at the, the Bucks. perhaps the biggest challenge is that they really haven't met any real threatening competition. And despite at times, things not going 100% perfectly this afternoon. Uh, they have been pretty much in control of the game as it shows on the scoreboard, but despite these slight shortcomings, the sign of a good team, they're able to bounce back and do it quickly. Pitch goes to Warden. Warden inside the 35 to about the 33. He'll get some of the penalty yardage back. It'll make it second down and about, let's see where they spot the ball. About 11, I'm gonna say second and about 13. Bucks trying to show a couple of different things here and looking for that big play again. Either Potter's gonna have to run up the middle or he's gonna be able to thread another nice pass play to Warden. As Warden this afternoon has done a fantastic job. He's a, he's a kind of a guy that you forget about when he's out there and then all of a sudden, hey, wait a minute, there he is and there's the ball. Warden splits wide to the right. Wing to the right side of Shaq. It's a handoff to Armstrong. He's punched in, but he still gets three or four yards. Well, you saw when the handoff was made there to Armstrong, it appeared as though he was going to be stopped immediately, but no. Dave, with his strength, determination, able to spin on that and just get away from a couple of potential tacklers and squeeze out a few positive yardage on that play. And on third and long, I would be very sure you think Armstrong get the ball. I would be surprised if Potter didn't carry it himself. Either Potter or you're going to look for a pass play. Well, some type of an option. Let's see what happens. Titus goes wide to the right. Shackleton will come out in the wing right. Double wing look. Armstrong, wing to the left. Uh, not Armstrong, Warden. Armstrong setback. Now, Warden goes to the right side. Rolling to the right. Throwing the ball, and it's behind Scotty Warden. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Now, let's see if they elect to punt the ball. They are close enough in. Let's see uh, the 32-yard line that you might think they may go for this. They might go for it, but once again, good pressure by the defensive line of the Spartans put some early pressure on Potter. 
forced him to release the ball a little bit sooner than he really wanted to. And as a result, the pass was behind, but he had really no choice then to do that. The good thing was there was no chance of that ball being intercepted. And they will go for it on fourth down. In the slot, key play here for the Bucs. Is Warden, back to pass, rolling right. Throws, he's got a man, Warden wide open to the 20, 15, 10, 5, cuts it side, touchdown! Touchdown, Central Box West! A great play, just as it'll work for four. Scotty Warden wide open down the right side, and he breaks two tackles and goes into the end zone. A 34-yard touchdown pass, completing a 126-yard drive. <laughs> wow, Bob, I'll tell you, keep going, I'm listening to you. Three for three, Scott Warden has been the unsung hero of the first half this afternoon in this playoff game. Just as it appeared when the Bucks were had their backs up against the wall, Wharton somehow has come in on three particular situations. He's three for three in getting open, getting the pass, and either taking it into the end zone or coming up with a key play. And Patterson adds the extra point, and we're looking at the Bucks 14, the Spartans nothing. And let me say that again so that you've just sure. That drive was a 126-yard drive. They went 91 yards on their own and another and another 35 yards on officials' penalties. So you can count that as a 126-yard drive. Coach Benton will say that was a good drive, 91 yards. Let's take a look. Wide, wide open. It has worked twice. One time all the way down to the 10 to watch here. Breaks a tackle here. He's got a man at the one. Does a little shaky gets by Zlatek and goodbye into the end zone. Touchdown Central Bucks West and it's 14 to nothing. He had some great help on that far side blocking as well. But you talk about a play offensively that breaks the defense's back. It's that particular one. Just as when it appeared as though the Spartan defense were able to contain the Bucks' movement of the ball. The Bucks throw a play, a play that's been unexpected. And you know what, Bob? They haven't done it once. They haven't done it twice. They've done it three times already in the first half. Coach Catafio has got to be over there scratching his head, and the kids got to be wondering, wait a minute, how are we going to stop this? You know, we stop Armstrong, we stop Potter, but we can't stop this guy, Warden. So once again, a real testimony to the overall offensive talent of the Bucks. Greg Ward kicks the ball off, taking the run, run and he's picked up on a great open field tackle there. Special teams play, a great one there by the Bucks. As a great open field tackle, brought him down. And it'll be Let's take, take a look, look at, at it. it again. Good control as the ball carrier carries right up the middle of the field. Just when he sees someone coming down, he tries to make the turn. And of course, not as number 20 comes in as we get a roster to identify who that might be. But it was a great special teams kickoff coverage play. Here's Lottek with second and third effort. Running up the side, picks up a couple on the far side. So it'll be second down and about seven as he gets three on the carry. Again in the shotgun look. Man in motion is Padavan. Low snap, puts Lottek to scare. Over the middle, hit, catches the ball, he'll have the first down. And it'll be a first down for Wyoming Valley West. We have 5.41 to go in the half. The Spartans trail the Bucks by that 14 to nothing score. Now backs are in the eye, again no huddle. Hand up goes to Rocco Grande, he breaks through the line initially, but boy is he met by that white, by that white picket fence. Bucks defense really coming up big here when they have to, Bob. And I'll tell you one thing Coach Petten doesn't want to do is give up any points. We're a little over five minutes left to go in the first half. But, you know, this is a team, the Spartans, that if the Bucks, everything was just going their way and they would be playing against a team that was not as well coached, they'd have a pretty sizable lead at this time. The handoff goes and carrying it for short yardage. Push him little... back. Oh! <laughs> They come, Potter comes away with the ball, but they're not going to have any of that. Matt Jones carried it, not for much. It'll be third and about five. As they tried to trip off third and about three, I beg your pardon. And again, the no-huddle look. 
but Jim Cantafio has been the difference in the game for the Iowa Valley young. West Spartans, as well as the individual ability of Zlatek on both sides of the ball. No. He has really been an on-field leader, and he's played like it this afternoon. How are I looking? Going for the first down, carrying the ball for the first down is James Mack. It'll be a first down for the Spartans, and they move into Bucks territory with 4.23 to go in the half. The thing is, if the Spartans are able to sustain this drive, Bob, and put some points on the board, they go into the locker room at halftime if the Bucks don't counter before the end of this first half with some renewed life. And they, the longer the game goes without the Bucks putting this game out of reach, the more belief the Spartans have in themselves as a team. And of course, with that comes that potential for an upset. The look, now he's going to go deep, he's got a man wide open on the left side, oh, and a great play, but a flag, flag is down, yeah. we are going to have, I think we're going to have defensive pass interference here. Great play down that side, it appeared as though as the ball was slightly overthrown, but the intended receiver down that far side really turned the Jets on, as we see a reporter or cameraman, photographer down on that far side to show you just how dangerous it is to be on a football sideline. Here we see the ball in flight, heading down that left sideline, and the receiver there just gets it. It gets in his hands, but the hit was made, and of course the intended receiver was Frank Yash. It's a defensive holding call, and I'll tell you what, this is a good call by the official. And also the hold saved a touchdown for the Bucks because if he doesn't hold him there, Yash is it's all away. alone. Exactly. Because the, de defending, the de defensive back, if you saw Zlatek pump, he went down, out, and Slip. up, the defensive back went for the First ball, down. went for the play, and made a good defensive play to hold the man. Yeah, it's a 15-yard penalty, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot better, better than, than having six. six points. That's right. So once again, the nitty-gritty offense of the Spartans continue to move. No back. No. Quick pass into the ground. And actually, I think that may have been. There was a misread on yeah. that play. Somebody had missed a pattern, as you see Zlatek upset. Apparently, it might have been intended for Chris Keating, and Keating might have taken on a wrong pattern, and Zlatek being upset fires that ball into the ground. And of course, showing the intelligence of Zlatek, realizing that he was under pressure, he didn't try to force the play, immediately killed it. Second and 10. Again, Padavan in motion. In the shotgun is Zlatek. Now we have a trip's right. Come back to pass, he throws the screen, and it's dropped. And I'll tell you what, it's a good thing it was dropped because there were a lot of white jerseys waiting for him. Yeah, great penetration coming down by the Bucks uh, on the near side. Armstrong was right on him on one yeah, side. Yeah, Dave Armstrong and looked like he was going to get a whole piece of him, actually. And Zlatek, I think, fired it prematurely, and it was bobbled into the hands of Matt Jones. 3.55 to go in the head. It's a third and ten situation. Again, that look to the right side. Twins on, uh, double twins, really. Now man goes in motion to the other side. That is Yash. In the shotgun, low snap taken by Slotek, good protection, throws deep and it's going to go out of bounds as he threw the ball away as the white jersey started coming through. And that, folks, is good coverage on defense. I was going to say, it's a compliment to the Bucks defense. And once again, you see Slotek, even at the high school level, where we've seen guys at the top level try to force that play, get themselves into big trouble, realizes that, wait a minute, I don't have any opportunity. Now what we're going to see is something probably a little different again. We've seen him punt normally. We've seen him pooch punt. And of course, I'd, with the I'd pooch punt. I'd almost look for the fake here. Exactly. And I wouldn't be surprised. Once again, they're on a Bucks side of the field. Takes it, and he will kick it. Kicks it nice and high. Boy, it's a nice punt. Right. No return. Going to bounce out. And again, the Bucks will start with awful field position. Spartans with deep respect for the Bucks special team, realizing that the Bucks have some guys that are real burners on return. So how do you defend against that? Simply, tactically place the ball. Shouldn't be too difficult to learn, Bob, but how many big caliber teams we see struggle with that particular play? It's very simple. Absolutely, absolutely. By the way, uh, Brian Buckley has been playing a great game too. It was he on that screen pass who really put the pressure on and uh, get, did a great job there. So the Bucks, with 3.43 to go in the half, have the ball at their own 11. They started at their own 15, their own 9, and now at their own 11. Handoff goes to Armstrong, picks his way. He's out to the 15, he's out to the 17. He'll get about seven yards, make it second and three. Well, once again, Dave Armstrong, pretty much what you would expect. And you know, given that he's been signed to go to Michigan a year ago, here is a guy that has not slacked off one bit. 
quite the contrary when his team has needed him most. And when he's been needed to come through, he's a guy that steps up, makes it happen, takes the responsibility, and away he goes, pulling the team with him. Now the officials have a timeout. I think there's either a, no, there's an injury. They have an injury that's uh, Mark Baynock made a great catch early in the game. He's got a problem with his leg. And uh, while they uh, take the timeout, we'll, we'll uh, talk about the uh, West team and how strong they have looked on offense here. I mean, Dave Armstrong, uh, Warden, Potter. I mean, it's been just a great show for them so far. Long, long, long drives. Now, single setback is Armstrong. Double wing formation. And it goes to Armstrong. He's got a hole. He's got the first down out of about the 29-yard line. One of the keys, uh, Bob, to the Bucks' success throughout this season has been their superb conditioning and discipline as we see another player slow to get up for the Spartans. It's so Matt Jones, and I'll tell you what, if I can just break in for a second, what you're seeing now is Wyoming Valley starting to get punished. Oh, sure. Punished, and of course, the AstroTurf does not help uh, because when you're trying to go one way and your ankle is uh, <laughs> visibly forced to go another way, something has to give, and it's definitely not going to be the turf. But anyhow, uh, the point I wanted to make, one of the reasons why the Bucks have been so successful is their superb conditioning and discipline. And a lot of these guys play both ways on the football. And the Bucks coming into today's playoff game, they're a healthy team. First and 10, the ball now up at the 24-yard line. It is Potter on the keeper. He's to the 25, and he slips down. And there's a case. We talked about the crown field. It's great at the middle, unlike the regular football field, which the, the middle usually is the worst part. The middle's real good here. I want a crown field on the turf field. I walked the side right where he is, and it was a little squishy and still draining. Exactly. Potter had more room, but he slipped down. He goes down to gain about three, but he actually had about eight or nine. Right. And when you try to cut inside on that crown, you lose footing, as was shown there. Now, you take this on a field with mud with your regular cleats, Potter's able to make that kind of a cut. Armstrong busting up. He gets just shy of the 30-yard line. He'll be about four yards shy of the first down as we're inside two minutes to go in the half. Now, of course, Petten would like to score here. They, they would like to score, but they also realize they get the ball to open up the third uh, third quarter. That's so right. But more than anything else want to do is keep the ball out of Wyoming Valley's hands. Exactly. And Wyoming Valley can go to the locker room scratching their head, figuring how are we going to stop a player like Warden? It seems like we've got everything else contained and bottled up. We've got to stop Warden, and they've got to come out in that second half to try to get some points on the board if they're going to stay in this game. That's your split. Armstrong doesn't get the hand up. Great protection. Long pass for Titus. And it's going to be knocked away. And it can fly. That should be defensive pass interference. Yeah. Zlatek, Zlatek. Zlatek had overrun the coverage. And what he tried to do was to get back into position. And as you saw him do it, once again, you talked, you just mentioned it earlier, Bob, the water on the crown, on the down slope, on the side of the field. Zlatek couldn't get his footing. You saw him slide, so the, other, the next option was to pull him, hold him. And that's exactly what the call will be. Now, so. this is not a spot foul. In, in the pros, of course, it is. In college and in high school, it is from the line of scrimmage. It'll give him 15 yards. It'll move it out to the 45-yard line. We have a minute 23 to go in this first half. Now moving it out to the 45 gives them an enormous opportunity because now... Pass interference, pass interference against the red, automatic first down. Now what it gives them is it gives them opportunities to do a lot of different things here. Right, and to maintain possession of the ball, there's a minute 23 left to go in that first half. So a big play and a big break for the Bucs. But once again, it was their play calling and their execution that created this situation. Bucs are split. Back. Rolling to the right is Potter. He's going to be brought down. No, he's not. He stays up. He's on the 50. That's inside of the 45, the 40, 35, 30, 25. Corey Potter's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Central Bucks West. Corey Potter with a 55-yard run. And for all the world, he should have been stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Once again, showing what a great, great leader number 22 is. Corey Potter takes it around the right side. Packs back to the left into the end zone. And the Bucks are leading 20 to nothing. Moments earlier, Bob, we sung the praises of Dave Armstrong and his impact on the team. There is another leader on the team that just demonstrated how he can contribute in a positive way. And once again, the whole play would not have occurred without that awesome offensive line as Patterson gets in the lineup to make the extra point. 
Patterson lines it up. He'll left foot it. It's a high snap. Stone puts it down. The kick is up. The kick is good, and it's 21 0. Now, there's only one downside to this. <laughs> you got a buck nine left. We'll talk about it right after the break. Let's stay. Go away. We'll come right back. <laughs> No way he's out! It's impossible! Actually, Coach, it's not. See, Jimmy had to travel a distance of 90 feet. He reached an average speed of 15 miles. If academic standards are important to you, call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet and be a big league parent. Well, I am having a real good time, folks. <laughs> Bob Friedman along with Florian Kemp. We have a minute nine to go in the first half of this e PIAA Eastern semifinal game, and the Bucks on an electrifying 55-yard run by Corey Potter around the end through everybody, take a 21-0 lead. Now it's Patterson will kick off. He'll kick it low. It's taken by Allen up back to the 30. Cuts to the 35 and about to the 40-yard line goes uh, Mahmoud Elbada. And it will be there with a minute one to go in the half that Wyoming Valley takes over. Now, you got to think they're going to be throwing, throwing, and throwing here. Obviously, Bob, uh, you talk about a knockout punch. That last run there, individual effort by Potter, uh, I would classify that as a knockout punch here for the first half because up until that point, as we see a timeout being called on the field, the Spartans from Wyoming Valley West, for all practical purpose, despite not having scored any points, they've been able to hang in there. They have not totally been out of the game. 7 nothing, 14 nothing. but now you're done. You're down 21 to nothing, and it's not that you're down. It's how it happened. One big play in the middle of the field. Their quarterback goes solo, runs it in for the touchdown. It's got to be very demoralizing. And yet, here's a team of Spartans who have been known all year long. Big play, big play, big play. And what does West do to score the three touchdowns? Big play to Warden. Big play to setting up the first one. Right. Big play to Warden setting up the second and scoring the second one. And big play by Potter for the third one. All 40 yards or 35 yards or longer. Big, big play. Long drives. An 85-yard drive, of course, the one that will hopefully go down in CUS lore is 126-yard drive, 91 yards, and then the 89-yard drive. Bob, the Central Bucks West come in today. The Harrisburg Patriot newspaper ranks them number one in the state high school football, and USA Today ranks them fourth best in the nation. And despite having a day when things might not be totally going perfect, and if you, we had a chance to talk with Coach Petten, or I should say we would have a secret microphone in that locker room, we'd probably hear a lot about that. But despite that, a team that shows class and character, why they're so good, despite having shortcomings, they find a way to win. And I'm telling you, look at the scoreboard, pretty commanding, 21 to nothing. Play exceptional on both sides of the ball. First down pass is incomplete. Second down pass right through the hands of the receiver. As Padavan was open, but it was a little bit high and he couldn't hold on to it. That type of play, once again, and I don't know how you would tie it in, I say is a direct response from what the last big play of the Bucks was, namely Potter's Let's touchdown go! run, a knockout punch. When you deliver a knockout punch to a team, it has a psychological ripple effect throughout the team. You'll see players drop balls, do things, fumble, that you would never expect and should never happen. Third down, on the, under the rush, throws it. It's almost intercepted. Oh, Heron has a touchdown if, he, if they can hold it. And we're seeing the benefit of a knockout well, punch to the team who delivers it. Defense. Now you're getting much more inspired play. Now the defense is saying, hey, wait a minute, guys. I want to get on that scoreboard, too. And we almost saw it happen right there. Well, O'Hearn and Buckley were both there. It's they both went for the interception. Great defensive play. O'Hearn is just holding his helmet because he knows if he can hold right. on to it, he's gone. Well, don't give up, guys. He got a whole second half yet. Football action coming up. Snap high. It's going to be kicked away, and this time it's an end over end kick. It'll be taken. Oh, and it's fumbled. Fumble was picked up. Oh, look at that. And the ball's still on the ground. And I think Wyoming Valley West is going to have it as they went for the reception. The ball's fumbled, and West gets a break. Wyoming Valley West gets a break on the fumble of the punt. A ball that was spinning, and it came up to yep. get the ball. Starsman came up to get it. Now, you see Starsman. You see Slotek. Half kicks it. 
And of course, you take your eye off a ball on a wet day, you have it, but you don't have complete control. It squirts loose. Keep in mind, when the ball hits the ground, it's wet. And it squirts loose. Let's see if the Spartans can do anything. Back to pass off the uh, shotgun. He'll throw it. He's got a man. There's a complete new ball. Goes, his ball's away from Padovan. Yeah, this is something you look at it and you say, well, you know, Starsman's trying to make a play. He's trying to come up on the ball and get it. Get Should he have caught the ball? Who knows? Who you knows? can't second he, guess you it. You can't yeah. second guess it's something a like split the kid. Second. The kid's trying to make a play. Yeah. He does the best he can. He does pick the ball up. So you can't blame him on that. He has control of the ball. When he goes in the line, the ball's not loose. That happens. But at any rate, what's here now, Wyoming Valley needs to take advantage. Looking at the Wyoming Valley side, they have 34 seconds. They'll call a timeout and talk about things, or do we have a penalty? No, it's going to be a timeout. No, we, we have home oh. during the run of 31 run. It's still first down. So we have a hold. And that'll take them back to the inside their own territory with 34 seconds to go in the half. So just as they get the momentum on the break, the hole takes the break away. The officials take the break away from Wyoming Valley West. But once again, at the risk of being repetitive, the Bucks, whenever they come up in a situation on the short side of the ball, they find a way to keep plugging and make things go for them in a positive way. No and, of, and of course that penalty was called against the sport as the officials are obviously being paid by the flag today <laughs> dead ball that's the red team still first now as i say i'm, I'm as a central bucks west person i'm glad that this is going against them against the wyoming valley but <laughs> in about a half an hour, we'll still be in the first half. Is what well, you're this field me. is light, unfortunately. <laughs> now they're going to try a lateral. Let's see if they pass off this. They do. It's up in the air for grabs. It's intercepted. Intercepted and carrying the ball is Greg Ward. Ward takes it to the... That's not Ward. I beg your pardon. Let's see who intercepted the ball. I thought it was Greg Ward, but it's not. And we'll have to Greg check Kinsel. Look yeah, at Greg, Greg Kinsel's Kinsel, got yeah. the ball. There's Greg Kinsel. Great read on that play, but once again, good pressure on everybody as uh, Chris Keating tried to lob it to the far side of the field. Kinsel was able to read it, but Keating had a lot of pressure, and it looked like uh, he might be slightly shaken up on the play, too. Did not have a good stance, did not have good footing to deliver a crisp pass to that far side. 20 seconds to go on the half, and they're all in tight. I think they'll take a knee and go to the locker room, unless they surprise me. No, he's back to pass. He's got Warden all alone down the left side again. Four he's one four. block. He gets it. He's to the 10. The 5. The there it is. is. a knockout punch this would be your one two you hit a little right you come around with a left and bob just as you probably correctly called they should take a knee on the ball no and coach pet now a lot of coaches would criticize that you've got to remember the situation you're in a playoff this is your season right here and you're playing against an opponent who is not of the caliber that you are, however, has stayed with you all the first half. You never, ever want to let him get back in the game. Snap and down the kick up. It's good as I have finally regained my breath. Eggs, Bob. It's been exciting. I'm telling you, it's just as exciting on the booth as it is down on the field. But the Bucks now go up 28 to nothing. 4-4-4, four, 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 the unsung hero of the first half. That's worth unbelievable play. But now, if you're the Spartans, they're just about, they've got to say, wait a minute, you know, we don't even want to come out and play the second well, half. Tell you, let me tell you something. They score 14 points in the last minute and a half of the, of the first half. They get the ball in the second half. They are just shoving, forget stuffing it down their throat. They're showing the, the uh, Spartans a side of CB West nobody's seen this year. Potter sees the play. Warden has been so wide open because they respect the run so much. Warden coming out of the slot position has been wide open. A great pass. It was an easy pass to throw, but you know what? They're sometimes the toughest passes of all. Well, that's right. Wide open. We've seen uh, a Potter this afternoon throw what I call timing passes and touch passes. How many times we see at a top level, we'll see a guy try to pass the receiver three yards away, he'll throw at 100 miles an hour, and the guy can't even hold it. He just nicely, just place it in there. And of course, the Bucks have really 
taking control. And as Bob said in the closing minutes, Harry again of the first half. And that should just and that's about do it. We've got six, five seconds to go in the first half as he pooched the ball. And we have, uh, it was taken uh, by Nick D'Amico, one of the up men. And one play, let's see if he tries to go for one play. Uh, you know, Cantavio, he's got another whole half to play. He's got to do something well, here. He's, well, he's really going to have to work on is the psyche of his team. I mean, uh, because what Petten has done and what the Bucks have done in the closing minutes is really, is really going to take a lot of steam away from the Spartans. Hand off to Rocco Grande. Penalty this will not end the half. There's flags. I think we're going to have a face mask. I think we're going to have a mask. As it came from everywhere, and it looked like his head was turned. And one thing, you know, you talk about the flags and so forth, that's a penalty that has to be called. That's right. It's, uh, especially when you have a penalty uh, that risks the, the health or endangers the health of the player on the field, the official definitely has to call it. Now, this gives LaTeX a chance to, he's got a freebie here, to go for the downs. He can go for the Hail Mary pass. We've seen he does have the arm to do because it, it puts it at the 49. Face mask, right, 89, one untimed down. So you'll have one untimed down, so just as the first quarter ends on an untimed down, the second quarter ends. But it's a good call. You saw his head turn to the left, and it was no question that there was a mask in the play. So now let's see as Lottek decides he's back in the shotgun. He's going to put. Uh, He's got one. He's got one up back, blocking back. He's got a strong side to the left in the slot. Now he's back to pass. He'll throw it. He'll loop it over the middle. It's caught. Great That'll catch. do it right there. Great, Great catch, catch. But it's about yeah, shy of the touchdown, and it will finish the first half. The teams are going to the locker room. Everybody on the west side happy. Wyoming Valley West fans standing and cheering their team, but they got a big road to hoe here in the second half because they are trailing the Bucks of Central Bucks West. 28 to nothing as the teams go to the locker room. We'll catch our breaths, take a break, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. My neighbor Scott is always so busy. When he's not working, he's a fireman. He does a lot of cool stuff, like putting out fires and saving people's houses. He even rescued my best friend. I call him Smokey. Isn't he a cutie? I'm glad Scott's my neighbor. delirious Central Bucks West sideline here at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium. We are at halftime. Bob Friedman along with Florian Kemp. A game that is led by the Bucks, 28 to nothing but Florian until a minute and a half to go That's in right. the first half. It was anybody's ball. That's right, Bob. The euphoria really did not set in until the closing minute of this first half when the Bucks really went to work. Potter with a solo effort from midfield runs in for a touchdown. And then Warden, who has just showed up this afternoon, the unsung hero, four for four on spectacular catches, uh, big playmaking catches that have either resulted in direct scores, himself coming up with two touchdowns, and his other catches strategically big gains for the team to enable them to get in the scoring position. However, as we look at the scoreboard, 28 to nothing, it looks like it's lopsided in favor of the Bucks. The game, in reality, has been much closer than that. But what I say, Bob, we talked about it in the pregame, today represents a new season. And even though at times things haven't gone perfectly for the Bucks, whenever things have gone wrong, they've been able to correct them. And defensively, they played perfectly. They have not allowed the Spartans any points on the board. And if there's a chance to put the opponent away early, especially an opponent that has been playing with you step for step, has competitively been in the game, the longer that game goes without you putting him away, the greater the chance of an upset. And Coach Petten, being the fine tactician and experienced football coach that he has been over the years, recognizes that fact. And as a result, you saw in the closing minutes of the first half how important it was tactically for the team to get ready for the second half to go go for that touchdown and be serious about this game. You are going for the state championship. 
since the preseason, this team has been focused, and they have been playing as if they're a team on a mission. Well, it all started off with Wyoming Valley West winning the toss, taking the ball, and not being able to move it. And then they made a big mistake, because they gave the ball to Central Bucks West. <laughs> Punt the ball down, West gets the ball on the 15. Move the ball up, penalty. Move the ball up, penalty. Still are able to drive the ball downfield to the point where finally, after a big pass to Scotty Warden, set it up at the 14-yard line. It was Armstrong, Armstrong, and more Armstrong. Uh, the Wyoming Valley team thought that he fumbled at the goal line, but the officials correctly said that the ground caused the fumble. Got the ball at the one. Well, you've got the ball at the one with this offensive line and Dave Armstrong. You're in the end zone, and it was easy. On the next carry, he went in standing up, and it was Big Patterson's kick made it seven to nothing. It stayed that way through the end of the first quarter into the second quarter. Wyoming Valley had a few opportunities. They moved the ball fairly well, diversified offense, but West had the answer every time, or actually the officials sometimes had the answers on a couple of penalties. West takes the ball after a, a very strange oh, never went to the Oh, maybe five, 10 feet off the ground, rolled out at the nine yard line. They started there, they moved it up, they're called for a penalty, they move it up again, they're called for a penalty, they move it up again, they're called for a penalty, and they still move the ball up and take the ball to the point where they're moving it with six minutes and 28 seconds to go on the half on a big third down play. It's Potter who shows the arm, goes back to pass, Scotty Warden again, wide open, alone down the right side, gets the ball, breaks a tackle at the five, breaks a tackle at the one, and steps into the end zone. Patterson's kick makes it 14 to nothing. And it stayed that way until a minute and a half to go in the first half. Again, the Bucks have the ball starting at their own 11 yard line after another well-placed punt by Zlatek, who's everything advertised so far. They move the ball up. A pass interference penalty gives them good field position at right uh, toward midfield at the 45 yard line. And from there, it was Corey Potter. He took that ball and Florian, he showed why he is the leader of this team. Got the ball, took it around the end, broke a tackle in the backfield, broke one at about two yards past the line of scrimmage, cut it across the grain to the left sideline and he was off to the races and you're not gonna catch him from there. 55 yards, Patterson's extra point made it 21 to nothing, and I made the mistake off air of saying to Florian, the only mistake they made is to given Wyoming Valley the ball back with a minute and 20 seconds to go. Well, Wyoming Valley tried another strain, another oddball play, the lateral to the wide receiver who who's surrounded by white shirts, probably should have just gone down for it. Throws the ball, Kinzel intercepts it, there's 20 seconds to go on the half, I'm saying, well, maybe he'll take a knee, uh-uh, no way. Back to pass goes Corey Potter. Again, Scott Warden, wide, wide open. Gets a great block downfield and then breaks a tackle at the 10-yard line into the end zone. And you can see Wyoming Valley, just the air, just completely go out of their balloon. So we are at halftime. It's 28 to nothing. We'll take a break and be ready for the third quarter kickoff right after these messages. Don't you dare go away. the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots. When my son Kevin joined Little League, he wasn't exactly the best player on the team. But the coach saw something in him, and he took the extra time to work with him. Now, he can't wait to get out there on that field. <laughs> Just look at him go. I bet he feels 10 feet tall.
Welcome back to Wilkesboro Memorial Stadium. About to start play here in the second half. Hey, Florian start Hamm. today's ball game. Wyoming Valley West, you have a choice and good receiver. Is that correct? Seven Bucks West, your choice. Kick receiver to throw. You want the ball. Which way do you want to kick? You want to defend the board? Stand your backs over here, please. Shot of the Central Bucks West coaching staff, Coach Petten, as his team starts the second half with a pretty commanding 28 to nothing lead. Along with Bob Friedman, I'm Florian Kemp. Glad you could join us for this afternoon's PIAA Quad A semifinal playoff for the Eastern Region. And it's been the Central Bucks West continuing their winning ways. They've got a half of football left, 24 minutes of regulation. However, the Spartans from Wyoming Valley West have done everything possible to stay in this game until the closing 90 seconds of the first half. They were very much in this game until the Bucks came up with two big touchdowns. Potter with a long run from midfield. And of course, Scott Worden with his second touchdown of the game in the closing seconds of the first half gave the Bucks 14 big points to add to their 14 to nothing lead earlier in the first half. So as we get set to start play here in the second half, it'll be the Spartans kicking off to the Bucks. And the Bucks and there's Coach Petten. And talk about a man who's been able to keep his team focused on a mission. He has done it. And as we said in the pregame this afternoon's game, the Bucks really haven't faced a real challenging opponent. And coming into this afternoon's game, perhaps the biggest opponent to be themselves. There's the kickoff deep down the far side. It's going to be picked up by the Bucks as you see the wedge on the far side. And they get a nice return as the play comes up, and it's down just inside their 35. So to start the play, the Bucks with a ball. And joining me, Bob Friedman. Of course, Bob, you must be in that very special line down there. Oh, I'll tell you, I went, went down, decided to get a quick hot dog. <laughs> quick hot dog took a little while. I had to go to Scranton to get it. So uh, I'm <laughs> well, back. they're did still I, making did, them. Did I miss anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Coach Patton delaying his team's arrival here for the start of the second half. But the box will start off with good field position as play is about to get underway. Okay, backs are in the eye. Potter at quarterback. Now they shift, Shackleton goes to the right side. And the handoff goes, and that'll be, uh, I believe that's Ortiz on his first carry, and he won't get much. So Chris Ortiz into the game, he'll carry it and uh, give her a little yardage. Mark, yeah, the tackler on the play, Mark Zlatek, the quarterback for the Spartans, pretty much reading that play and coming up with a nice tackle. We saw Bob in the first half, he was a little bit shaken up, appears to be healthy here at the start of the second half. Well, I was talking about, I got to think you're going to see Wes try and run the ball right at him here, try and melt time off the clock. They got four, a four touchdown lead. We'd like to get one more and really salt this one away. Power left look. Goes to Armstrong. He's got five. He's got six yards. He'll be about four yards shy of the first down. Dave Armstrong with a couple of graceful moves as he prances his way up to the 40-yard line. And as you said, Bob, as it appeared late in the first half that the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West were really feeling the effects of that punishing offensive line and running of Dave Armstrong and Corey Potter, the Central Bucks West. And if the Bucks can, can maintain this drive, uh, we should see continued effects on that Spartan defense. Double wing look. Armstrong, the single setback. It goes to Armstrong. He's close to the first down. I think he's got it. I think he's got the first down. Had a great push by the offensive line. He'll take it out to the 45-yard line. And on the spot, the way it looks, I'm going to say that they got it. They put it down. Huh? I, oh, he's, yeah, he's got the first down. Looks like he so has it, yeah. Fresh four for the Bucks. 10-24 to go in the third quarter. CB West, 28. Wyoming Valley West, nothing. Offensive line again, continuing there. Very impressive and consistent play. Of course, having a size advantage at the line of scrimmage. Working well together as a unit. First and 10, ball at the Bucks 44 yard line. Potter under center. Power right looking at Fake handoff and it's Potter carrying the ball. Spins and he gets up the midfield. A gain of five on the play. Corey Potter showing power. And elusiveness gets the ball up the midfield. It'll be second down and a short five. Nice timing on that fake handoff there by Potter. And 
Potter showing some good balance and good agility as he spun his way for a pickup of five. There you see some size defensively. Good look at the defense, Matt Jones there leading it up and also for the Spartans, James Moran. On second down and five, Powell looked to the left side. Now Shackleton goes into motion. It's a handoff to Armstrong. He slips down after a game of about three. So it'll make third and about two yards to go. Nobody brought him down. Again, that side of the field is still very, very soft, if you will. Keating and Zlatek on the stop for the Spartans. And once again, we go back, Bob. I think if the field would be a natural surface, even with mud, I would think Dave would prefer running on that. And Absolutely. I think he'd have a better ability to cut and I think the Spartan defense would be at a greater disadvantage. But they better get used to it. If they are going to go all the way, they will play at a turf, turf field in Altoona. That's right. Third down and two yards to go. The ball, oh, the ball's fumbled. Ball's on the ground, jumped on it, and I believe Wyoming Valley West has come on with his law tech as the handoff was not clean, and here go the Spartans. They have a big opportunity at midfield. Well, you hear the noise, the thunderous applause coming from the far side, and as if somebody that trying to hang on to life on a capsized boat. All of a sudden now, the Spartans sense an opportunity to get back in the game. However, time is not on their side. 8.46 left to go in the third. They're down by four touchdowns. If they're gonna come back, Bob, if they're gonna get back in the game, they've gotta make it happen and happen now. Hand up goes to Rocky Gordon, and he is met at the line of scrimmage and blasted down by Jack Shackleton. Well, it's pretty obvious the Fox defense waiting in the wings. They go to work on the very first play of the first offensive series for the Spartans. Here we see the ball carrier down low, and so we see a great hit coming in there as the Bucks defense able to rally around. Shackleton on a great hit. Shaq has had a good afternoon for the Bucks as well. And defensively, as a unit, the team has played well, too. In the shot. Shaq goes what? Throws it over the middle. Got him out and knocked oh. out beautifully by O'Hare. Oh. oh, what a great play by O'Hare. Oh, Harry could have... If he would have just batted it up a little bit, might have been able to walk away and intercept that one, but nonetheless, fundamentally, a perfectly defended. So we see an injured player. Watch this play. The ball this is big league. Great oh, position. what a beautiful just play. Just snuffed it out and a crunching hit after it and slow to get up over there is Chris Keating. He is down. Chris Keating took a big hit as he tried to concentrate making the catch on that ball thrown right over the middle, and there was double coverage by the Bucks on that play. And while we have this moment, we remind you once again that this game is brought to you by Suburban Community Television, your source for local sports. We're very, very proud to bring it to you. This is a special presentation, and Suburban Cable is proud to be the ones bringing it to you. We footed the bill, we brought the people up here, we, we spared no expense, except of course bringing me, because I come cheap. Well, how many donuts did you bring, Bob? I don't want to discuss it. <laughs> All I can tell you is the truck, people in the truck love me today. Okay. But anyway, the injured player Keating, it looks like he had his bell rung more than yeah. anything else. I mean, yeah. he's, they're not working on his lower body. He got crunched. Yeah. He just got crushed on that play. And uh, he, right now they're just asking him if he knows what town he's in. <laughs> well, you look around here. This is a field right in the middle of... The, the area here, you see houses around here. It's kind of like playing at Wrigley Field. Downtown Wilkesboro, that's where it's all happening. I don't say it's downtown, but it's near downtown Wilkesboro. Where, what, what downtown? <laughs> <laughs> I don't put Wilkesboro down there. It's a nice little town. Nice little town. Just Keating with a round of applause. Now Keating is okay, and that's good news. And the, the Bucks fans give him a nice big round of applause. He just got jarred, and sometimes you played it, I played it, you get a hit there. It was a good clean hit, and fortunately he's able to leave the field on his own. And power. you can't say the defensive back, well, the defensive back doesn't know that he doesn't have the ball. He's coming up from behind. He's doing what he's trained to do. He hits him, great jarring tackle, but oh, here and made just a monster play on that. So third down, nine yards to go. And again, Zlatek will go into the shotgun formation, has a strong race, trips to the right side, almost a Hail Mary uh, formation, you might say. Man in the slot, back to pass. Has time, he'll throw it deep. He's going for a Rocco Grande position, beautiful position on the play, was Jack was tightest. And I'll tell you, Rocco Grande had to play the part of defensive back on that one because it appeared for all the world that uh, Titus had that ball intercepted. Good positional play there by Titus. Titus was not sure of his ability to get underneath the ball, but he played it even smarter 
by not allowing the receiver a clear path to get underneath that ball. So once again, good heads up positional play defensively for the Bucks. Here is also, you hold your breath this time when Slatek well, gets in position to punt. And Warden and Potter are back deep. Zlatek standing at his own 35. He kicks an end over end. It'll kick it away from the coverage. Potter takes it at the 20, and the ball's loose again. Picked up, though, by Warden, and he's brought down at the 13. The ball was knocked loose again, and I'm sure Coach Benton's got to be talking to himself. How can they put the ball on the ground with the 28-point lead? But it was a great, give some credit, it was a great tackle by the... Uh, it's what the Wyoming Valley team, and they're teaching the take. Got to go for the ball. There's there it. Here he goes. He finally handles the ball. He carries it. What a great hit! When you are a defensive football coach, you spend a half an hour, an hour a week stripping the ball, but hitting Scotty the ball, Warden, knock it. Scotty Warden made a nice follow makes an absolutely huge play. He has great field presence. He doesn't look for the player. He looks for the ball. Turns around, finds it, goes, picks it up. Yeah, it's awful field position, but at least it's the Bucks ball and not the Spartans. Not the Spartans going in, but every time Slotek gets in position to punt, and this is a credit to not only the special teams, but the coaching staff of the Spartans from Wyoming Valley West, you know they're going to make something happen. And this is often, more often than not, Bob, this is an area of football that's easily overlooked special teams. But at some point, let me tell you one thing, at some point, I'm watching Zlatan, he takes a long time to get rid of that ball punt. Well, because point, he's you want looking to put 10 guys up on the line exactly. and say, hey, so what, let's go after him. Whenever you use a quarterback, and this is what some teams have done too at the pro level, is you find a second or third string quarterback and you let him be your punter. Or you find a punter that has the ability to maneuver with the ball and throw the ball. And a lot of times it becomes very effective when you're in a crunch situation, when you have a guy back there says, wait a minute, either the snap is fumbled or there's an opportunity to make a pass to get that first down or touchdown. Potter under center, backs her in the eye, handoff goes to the tailback. Carrying the ball, he breaks it open! He could go all the way! This is Scotty Warden! If he can outrace him, he is going to go! 87 yards on Fox! Warden, Central Rock Rick, and Baby Richmond in the back. Well, I don't think if you would have said that yards, Scott Warden right. would play such a key role in today's game, you would have said, huh? But no, Scott Wharton has had opportunities, and every opportunity that has come his way, he has turned it into a big plus, I should say a mammoth plus, for the Bucks this afternoon. Let me not only give him the hat trick earlier for his receiving, but that is his third touchdown of the afternoon. And let me say this again, because it doesn't get enough air time. I know it's not fair, but you know, this is the way it is, and when you're a lineman, you understand this. Joe Wilson, Ben Carver, Matt Volaitis, John Wilson, Adam Dumrod, and Greg Ward doing the job up front. The kick is up. It's good with 7.46 to go in the third quarter. The Bucks are blowing them out 35 to nothing. And again, the blocking up front. 87 yards. You could have driven a truck through the hole. And the reason, they were all looking for Armstrong. Let's take a look at it again. Here he comes. Now he gets up in the secondary. And the only thing that's going to stop him if he slips on the turf because you're not going to catch Scott Warden. Now you said, you know, Scott Warden, our unsung hero. I have been to enough Bucks games to watch Scott Warden. Scott Warden is a great football player. He has made some incredible plays, including a touchdown run against Bullard White Marsh last week. Well, for all the world, he was stopped. The five yards that guy had it in with his legs. He broke loose of that tackle. He first jumped over the pile and then got a hit on the leg and he was held and he dragged the man about two yards, broke the tackle, burst into the secondary win. This one, he didn't have to break any tackles. He was gone. The blocking up front was spectacular. And I guess Patterson's gotten leg weary because now we're back to Ward, I think, kicking off again. So the Bucks continue to punish the Spartans. They're up 35 to nothing. And Bob, as you mentioned, the key players that you would expect, Potter and Armstrong getting the job, but the Bucks also stacked with numerous other individual talents. This afternoon, they've played well as a team. That's why they're up 35 zip. Ball is kicked off and carried back to about the 35 yard line by James Mack. And it is there that the beleaguered Spartans of Wyoming Valley West will take possession. They trail 35 to nothing, and I don't think they know what hit them. 
That's exactly right. Just uh, as we saw a few minutes earlier, Chris Keating, as he fell on one of those punishing hits coming across the middle, I feel as a team, the Spartans from Wyoming Valley West felt that way near the end of the first half. And here they come in the second half. They thought they could climb back into the game. And to the Bucks credit, led by Coach Mike Patton, they have remained focused. And they have come. They have played, although they fought the ball up there deep uh, on that punt. They were able to maintain possession and work it upfield and came with that big play breaking run there by Scotty Morgan. And not only are they content to rest and defend the lead, but they continue to march forward and put points on the board. This is a team that's destined on a mission, destined to go to the state championship. However, they've got to be cautious and continue to progress the way they've done throughout the season, and that's step by step, game by game. Dave Armstrong, I don't know if he has an injury or whatever, he's off the field, he's to the back bench. So he's not playing right now. They only have 10 men on the field to the Bucks. As the handoff goes to Rocco Grande, I was counting them up. You heard people yelling, you only got 10 on the line. I think they only have 10 players on the field. Let me count it again. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, three. Yeah, I think that's, I think, I think Potter hadn't come out yet, so they only had 10. The game is uh, six yards. And now Potter's back into the safety position. Take the spotting with one player, they have a full complement now. Second down, hand up goes to Rocco Grande. He'll be near the first down. And he's brought down at about the 43-yard line. Bucks' linebackers and defensive line have done a good job this afternoon of containing Rocco Grande, the big key runner, or one of the key runners for the Spartans this afternoon. He has really not had much of an opportunity to pick up some big field gains. And Corey Potter, that's what they're doing. They're taking the seniors, the captains, off the field. Potter and Armstrong, unless something unusual happened, are done for the day. At least on defense, they are. And Dave Titus came in for Corey Potter. On third down and short, uh, Rucker Grundy will get the first down. He'll pay for it, but he'll get it. He'll get it. The Spartans will continue their drive as we're... Approaching the six minute mark here of the third quarter. And another injured Spartan comes off the field. That's number 43 and that's Rocco Grande. Well, Rocco Grande is uh, pretty courageous, I guess, when he takes the handoff from Zlatek and he just barrels his way right up the middle of the field. And obviously, Bob, that's a pretty awesome defensive line in terms of strength and size. And of course, Rocco Grande, no surprise, feeling the effects in the third Play quarter. Play action pass, throwing the ball. He's got a man, that's Padovan. He's complete just uh, uh, past the sticks inside Buck territory to about the 43. And you notice that they're much slower now. They're huddling up now. 35 points down. They're not going to try any more chicanery. They're going to go with the straight stuff. They're huddling up. They're taking their time. That also shows you the sign of a tired team. Well, a team that really had no choice. Uh, they came in with great respect. They had no illusions that by far the Bucks of Central Bucks West are a superior team. However, they realized they had some outside shots. They came out after the opening whistle, and they played, and they hung in there. And for the most part, they stayed with the Bucks throughout most of that first half. But the Central Bucks West, clearly a team with much more talent, a team that has a very successful coach, a coach that's very focused, has good controls on this team in terms of their focus and discipline, and a team that refuses to quit and die. And I just can't believe that there's any other team in the state that has the talent of a Central Fox West that can play as well that'll be able to upset them. If the Bucks can suffer any shortcoming in terms of a loss, uh, clearly they'll have themselves the blame because as a team, they are so far superior and they play so well that it's going to be very hard for an opponent to dethrone them. Well, short carry and it's third down and about six. Third and six as the Bucks will It will try to hold on to the shutout. Back to pass goes Latte. Under a rush, he gets out to the left side, gets around the end. He'll run for it, and he's pushed out of bounds, shy of the first down. 
good pursuit. Zlatek, great coverage by the Bucs. Yeah, Bucs really not giving Zlatek first in the secondary, getting the job done. Zlatek did have time to fire a pass, but he shows a tremendous about, uh, uh, amount of maturity on his decision. Here he is, coming down to the near side in pursuit, trying to get that first down, but good pinching there by the linebackers, forcing him out of bounds before he gets, and they're gonna bring the chains over, but it appeared to Bob and myself as, as though he would be short, but let's see where the ball's spotted, and let's see what officially happens. Well, I'll tell you, they gave him a real good spot yeah. there. But Zlatek, Bob, shows a lot of maturity at this level uh, in being, with his ability Boy, to, make a a quick, no. to make a quick decision yeah. under pressure. And uh, a, a player, a quarterback that plays with a lot of confidence and of course when he realizes he doesn't have an opportunity to throw a pass that has a 90 95 percent chance of being completed either holds on to the ball or downs it or throws it out of bounds so a fourth down and short looking at some new faces into the game Dave, uh, Jake, uh, no, Jacob Blumgren is into the game Dave Edwards is also into the game looking at uh, they put some of the out of bounds. second string players Ortiz in Edwards is taking Connor's place, so it's fourth down and very short. We've got to think Slotnick will call his own number here. Well, you've got an eye, and you've got uh, receivers on both sides, twin on a far. And it is a handoff, and they'll get the first down. They're carrying the ball for first down yardage is James Mack. It'll be a first down for the Spartans. We have 4.42 to go. In the third quarter, it has been all Central Bucks West, 35 to nothing. They led it to half, 28 to nothing, and then an electrifying 87-yard run by Scott Warden, untouched. Here's to the 35 nothing lead, and Wyoming Valley trying to press for their first score. Back to pass, help play action. Throwing it, we he's got Padovan. Padovan catches the 15, he's down to the 10-yard line. Nice pass by uh, Zlatek to Matt Padovan. Padovan, a junior receiver. He will be back next year. Zlatek, this is his, could be his final game. Zlatek, of course, he shows you how dangerous he is when he has a little bit of time and he has a, at least one target downfield. He is a very accurate passer, throws the ball with nice zip and also nice placement. You notice where he delivers the ball, Bob. The defense really has no chance of intercepting that at all. First and 10, the ball at the 11 yard line. Back to pass, Lottek throws out in the flight. He's got a man to five, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Wyoming Valley West, Matt Jones with the touchdown. And with 4.02 to go in the third quarter, the Spartans are on the board. Lottek that time, a quick short release outside. Jones doing a nice job getting in position. And there you see the Spartan sideline. Fans have shown out, shown up for this afternoon's game. There's Jones. The score of the touchdown and they will go for the extra point and this will be Matt McCormick to attempt the extra point it's down it's spotted it's kicked whoa way looks like we got a flag on the play gee what a surprise <laughs> we almost forgot about them in the second half oh we've only played eight minutes so let's see what the call is West may have been offside on it so the Spartans coming up with their first touchdown. As you see the SC. That was an illegal substitution. 35 to 7, the scoreboard showing you there. So the illegal substitution will move the ball back and will cause. Substitution rule against Red. Replay the extra point. So McCormick, I showed a big leg on that yeah. extra point. And, right. and I bet you, you can almost, I, I would be shocked if they don't try an onside kick. Because <laughs> West, if one weakness, Ty, it's popped up, it's, it's good. good. But if there's one weakness West has shown, it's been on the onside kick. Abby even showed it, we showed a couple weeks later. So I'm, I'm thinking, they got nothing to lose. They got to try, you almost have to try the onside kick. Well, if you're the Bucks of Central Fox West, you need to welcome that. Uh, you want to head into the next round of games and realizing as you get closer and closer to the final, to the championship, that you're going to get into a game situation where winning or losing might be determined by an onside kick. You want to not only be able to offensively execute one, but defensively, you want to have a great hands team. 
And this is where the Bucks coach right now, special teams coach, is getting him down there, uh, of course, under the direction of Coach Mike Pett. Say, hey, wait a minute, guys. You know, special teams, we've sort of been less than perfect this afternoon. Be prepared for an onside kick or be prepared for just a squid kick right down the middle of the field. I want you to concentrate. Who's going to make the return? Concentrate. Don't fumble the ball. Don't give it away. Basic things first. A lot of times, Bob, players will get into a jam when they try to do everything at once. And they're looking at the ball. They're looking at the defender. They're looking where they run. But and then they miss the concentration. Right. They drop the ball. But the, you look at the team up front there. It's all hands. you got Shackle. you got Titus. You've got uh, Ward. You've got O'Hara, uh, who's up, there, up front there. You've got Andy Schmidt, who's up there. He's got hands. Uh, you've got, um, in the second line, Mario Palena, also who can do it. So they're all up. You can see it. I mean, you've two different two D-packs, but you got to believe they're going to go for it here. He hits it, and he pooches it. Yep. And it'll be picked up there at the 25-yard line by Starsman. Starsman will take it out. Nice return to the 30-yard line by Joel Starsman. And it's there that West will take over with 3.54 to go in the third quarter. The Bucks up by the 35-7 score. Let's see who comes in. I think we have a new quarterback. Uh, let's see. No, let me take a look. Starsman had a in. good basic judgment on that return. Bob kept his eye on the ball and just rode it right in the back of the wedge and got the Bucks in a pretty good field position on their side of the 50 to start this drive. It is a new quarterback. It'll be Bill Stone coming in at quarterback. So Bill Stone will be in Mario Pelena. So the second team is in there, figuring the 35 to 7 lead. They're in a good, comfortable position. Of course, Armstrong's still in there. And it goes to Polenia. He can't get out of that play. Nice play. The pitch was a little bit behind him. And Glenn Kelly came up right through and nails him for a loss. So the first play goes a little bit uh, strange. The pitch was just a little bit behind Polenia. But let's give Kelly some credit on it. He came through and did the job, and Polenia couldn't get out of the plane. couldn't get out of the backfield. Well, one thing you're going to see, uh, if the score, or as we look at the scoreboard, the scoreboard pretty much indicates the Spartans have relatively little chance getting back into this game. But to their credit, they're a team that refuses to die. They will continue to play hard on every play. And you can bet, Bob, that instruction is coming by way of Coach Cantafia. Brian Buckley now in the backfield. I mean, is he who carries the ball? He'll get about three back, so it'll make a third in uh, the original 10 yards to go. And the Bucks content to melt some clock down, see what they can do. Now it's 35 to seven. You don't want to give it up too no. soon because this team, you just this saw it, they can strike oh, yeah. very quick. And what's what's interesting, despite being down 35 to seven, the defense, they're still playing inspired. You know when Zlatek gets the ball offensively for the Spartans, he's going to make something happen. So you just can't count this team down and out. Backs are in the eye. It is playing a, a big part of it. Uh, let's see who's got the ball now. Now that was Ortiz, and they will hold him there. For the first time in the game, the Bucks will have to pump the ball away. Still a lot of time, folks. you got two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter, and you got the entire fourth quarter. But Coach Petten wants to give his second team a chance to see if I have the second team defense in. He's going back to punt. Now this we'll is an Dan area Jarrett. of special teams where the, the Bucks uh, really haven't had much experience this afternoon. Danny Jarrett can kick. And he gets it away. Look at that. Oh, a beautiful high spiral taken back at the 27-yard line. And he won't get back to the 35-yard line. A great kick. Matt Jones could only wait for it to come down. Yeah. And he gets it. And by that time, the coverage was all over him. Yeah, good so coverage. The Spartans will get the ball at the 38-yard line or 33-yard line, I beg your pardon. On that particular play, Bob, no parting of the Red Sea on the on the punt coverage team, allowing the opponent to go right up the middle of the field. Absolutely. So, ball at the 33-yard line, 148 to go in the third quarter. Wyoming Valley trailing CB West, 35 to 7. Slotek with a deep handoff, and nice job by Rucker Grandy, who looked like he was really yeah. bad. They back in. He was hit in the backfield, but he manages to squirt through and gain about a yard. That's a tough run. Tough run, but good defensive pursuit, as we saw about uh, about five or six yellow helmets crunch on the ball carrier just as he got past the line of scrimmage. So on second down, actually they're going to say he got only about a yard, if that. Said his knee touched earlier, and that's to make it second and ten. The ball still at the 38. 
Handoff, no, it's play action. Back to pass. And he throws it behind his uh, receiver, Padavan. It'll be third and ten. He had him there, but threw it a little bit behind him. That's a case of trying to do too much. It's a good opportunity, Bob. Uh, it's not too often that some of the younger players on a high school team or some of the second stringers get an opportunity to get some game experience in a playoff caliber game. Well, you know, what's impressing me about Slotek is not just that he's got a very quick release. Yep. You know, Sonny Jurgensen had a great quarterback, Montana, Joe Montana, great quick releases. You, don't, you can't sack a kid like this too frequently because he does have such a quick release. Now he lost it for the sideline. It's a struggle for the ball, and I think they came up with it. Yeah. Oh, a great catch. Oh, what a great catch by Mac Jones. It looked like the Bucks were going to have a chance to intercept it, and underneath that ball was Dave Edwards, and Dave thought he had it, and then Matt Jones sort of jumped up just a second before, and he had great possession of it, and for Jones, that was quite an athletic feat because he was sort of not only running backwards, he was sort of sideways. He was in the air, and he was twisted, and a lot of times you see guys kind of fumble that ball once they have it, but no, he held on to it with a good grasp. So Slotek has him moved inside the 45-yard line of the 43. Play action pass. Slot tech back. He steps up. He throws. He's got a man wide open down the right sideline to the 30, 25, 20 yard line, and out of bounds goes James Mack. Well, the, the Spartans are on the move. You asked me for one word to describe that play by Zlatek, it would be smooth. Smooth as peanut butter without the chips because he sees Zlatek. At the moment he began to move, he had no option. He begins to put his head down. The ball is in one hand, and all of a sudden he sees two white jerseys. He draws the defenders to him. In the meantime, he frees up the receiver on the far side. He doesn't try to zip it. He just lobs it there. The receiver has clear sailing, and away they go for the first down. On the keeper, Slotek won't get to the 15. The ball's loose. Could be the There's ground. A scramble for the ball. Yeah. No, they're going to call it a fumble, and it's picked up fortunately yeah. for the Spartans by Mac Jones. Oh, the Bucks looking really impressive defensively right up the middle that time as they had Slotek all covered down. They forced him down to the ground. I thought maybe the ground might have caused that fumble. No, that the officials, look, yeah. Uh, the officials take a look, well, take a look see, at it. Now he's not down yet. That ball's knocked loose, and the side judge had a perfect view of it. As they struggle there for the ball, unable to come up with Dave Edwards, and there was uh, Jones right at Johnny on the spot. It's a loss, but they do maintain the ball. Actually, it's not a loss. It's, a, it's about even up, and we have come to the end of the third quarter. We have finished 36 minutes of play of this Eastern semifinal game at wilkes barre Memorial Stadium. The crowd is on their feet for CB West as they lead 35-7. to seven. We'll take a break and be back for the final 12 minutes. Don't go away. On January 8th, Amy Narvejo was saved from freezing to death by the National Guard. Were it not for their employers giving them the time to answer the call, this story might have had a different ending. To every employer who supports the Guard and Reserve, thanks for making us your business. And we are back for the start of the fourth quarter, back to pass. Under a rush, rolling to the right is Slotek, looking for a receiver. He'll walk to the end zone. Is it caught? Yes, caught. No, no, they say he dropped. They say he didn't have it, and Jones is all over the official. He's got to watch it. He could have a flag call uh, thrown at him. But Jones looked like he had it. Boy, the trailing official said, no, the ball hit the ground. So instead of a touchdown for Wyoming Valley, it'll be third down and 10. Slotek in hot pursuit by five bucks just lobbed the ball up in traffic and it appeared as though initially the ball was thrown out of reach, but Jones just stretched himself diagonally out in the air and the ball obviously hit his hands, Bob. The question remains, did he have possession? The if official that ball was there. Touched the ground, exactly. It's not a possession. And there so we see Bucky the Buck. <laughs> Bucky the Buck. But we I'll tell you, we we it's in the far corner and we're kind of partially blocked. They got a little view of it, so it's hard to tell. But anyway, it's third and ten. Play action, back to pass. He steps away from the rush. He throws. 
It's up for grabs. It falls through, and it's going to be oh! knocked to the ground. Oh, almost a great catch. Yeah. That Boy. ball touched three different players on both teams, and either either team would have caught it. Would have been a big play, either offensively well, or defensively. Zlatek did a great oh, job yeah. because oh. they blitzed him. He was about he to be sacked. Away. Let's take a look. Here comes Here's the, pass. the pass. It touches one, one two, two, and, and three. three. Almost. almost oh. West. We thought it was good. Almost intercepted. So now Wyoming Valley on fourth and ten will call a timeout. Obviously, they've got to go for it, Bob. Oh, I, and with a guy like Zlatek, armed with all his talent and ability, and some of the weapons that the Spartans have shown this afternoon, uh, it's in their best interest, and of course, to keep their fans interested in the game and to inspire some of the younger players. You want to go for it, try to make something happen. I'll tell you, they had plays working early in the game. They went away with it from it, and maybe either because West adjusted to it or whatever. Well, they tried a lot of exactly. sideline. I'm looking for a crossing pass. Exactly. I'm looking for a quick timing pass into the middle here because the sides are going to, the Bucks are going to figure they're trying to throw to the sides. I'm saying that he goes back into the shotgun, he stands, he get, tries to get see if uh, Padavan can break over the middle, get some first time. You don't need the touchdown here, you need to get the sticks. So I'm, I'm saying that they take what the Bucks give them, and the Bucks are not giving them the sideline right now. Let's see if the middle is available. That's right, and see what they do. But you're right about that. The uh, Spartans came out showing a lot of different formations defensively. The Bucks came out with a good counter strategy, and then of course, the Spartans had a change again if they were ever going to have a chance of moving the ball. So fourth and ten. Strong right side. All four receivers over there. They're going to try that play again with a pass. They'll roll back and he'll throw and he's going to throw it for a minute. He's got a man open and I think they're going to have yeah, a flag pass interference. And it's a proper call. Pa it's yes, a there was, good call. And right. he threw it for Zlatek. Yeah. That was Zlatek down there and he was interfered with and it's a proper call. It will be a half the distance to the end, the end zone call and it will be a first down. And I'll tell you, Wyoming you Valley. talk about timing, you talk about execution. I think, Bob, at this level, that is exceptional. I see as Zlatek comes over, quick laterals to Jones. Jones holds on to it and throws it towards that corner marker over there, perfectly, right on the money. Fancy pass interference, way number 23, automatic first down. And the ball had enough trajectory on it to allow Zlatek to get down that left sideline. He was there, and of course the Bucks defensively, they did what they had to do to prevent the touchdown, take the penalty. Let's see if the Bucks can stop him here. And of goes, carrying the ball for good yardage. Mac Jones will get it to the five. The Wyoming Valley providing a little bit of excitement right now with 11 to 20 to go in the fourth quarter. They trail 35 to 7, but they're just five yards away from adding a second score. And the Bucks defense has got to gear it up. Now, granted, this is a, a good deal. The defense here is not the first string right now, but they still have a lot of starters in there. Second down and goal. Handoff goes, and carrying the boys going to go into the end zone. Yeah, touchdown. Mac James, James Mack Mac. with yep. a touchdown run, and it makes it 35 to 13 with 10:59. And I think you're going to see Mr. Potter and Mr. Armstrong back in the game on offense. So we see as the Spartans have the ability to move the ball when they have those opportunities, but that last play that caused the defensive pass interference are the kinds of big plays that have been put in by Coach Pantapio, and he has been able to pick out the athletic talent to be able to execute those plays. And McCormick puts it through, it's good, and it'll be 35 to 14 now. Again, you gotta watch for the, definitely watch for the onside kick here. I'm looking on the sideline, Potter has his helmet back on, Armstrong has his helmet back on, Scotty Warden has his helmet on. They're, well, they're all, you're gonna see them back in the game now because there's 10.59 to go. It's a lot you of saw time. how fast they scored. <laughs> They're three well, scores down right that's, now. That's the point I want to make. And once again, this is another characteristic of a Cantafio coached side is that despite being down 35 to nothing, when they have a chance to claw back into the game and you give them that, <laughs> They are never going to give up until the time expires. And as you, the point you just made, Bob, there's quite a bit, a lot of, there's a lot of time left to go in this game for them to get more points on the board. Coach Petten is aware of that. He's going to do everything he can to prevent the Spartans from getting back. But it's amazing. After each touchdown, the Spartans score. It's amazing how much better they play on the field. We saw after the first uh, half towards the end there when those first two touchdowns were scored the team came out you mentioned the error was out of their bubble 
and they kind of played like a team that was destined to lose. All of a sudden now they get two touchdowns and they feel very much in this game and all those injuries and sore legs and heavy legs they had just a few minutes earlier have all of a sudden disappeared. Matt Jones approaches the ball, he'll kick the ground ball, the squib That's a roller. Style. And it's a fortunate one for uh, CBS carrying it right through the line, making a tackle of Scotty Warden and he almost broke it. Oh, Scotty Warden again, having the day of his life. Picks the ball up, goes through a seam and almost broke it all the way. And the Bucks have the ball at the 46 yard line. And here comes Corey Potter. Scotty Warden, we can't say, I, we're going to have a chance to talk with Scott in the post game after this afternoon's game. And, you know, sometimes Buck, you wake up uh, in the morning and no matter what you do, you feel so good. You feel, wait a minute, oh, it's my day. And I just wonder if Scott, when he got up this morning, if he felt that way at breakfast, that, hey, Mom, it's going to be my day today. But it has been. Flag is down on the side. We may have a legal issue. I don't think they were set for a full second, Florian. So uh, this may come back five yards. His arms going to carry it for four, but I think they're going to move uh, West back five yards. I don't think they were set for full second. We're talking it over. And that's what it is. I watched the hands come down. They had to be set for one full second. And what happened was it appeared... Dead ball foul prior to the snap. It's first down. So it'll be first and 15. Again, you have that first team back in the game as they now lead 35 to 14. Armstrong set back, Shackleton over there. Strong right, look. Hand up goes to Armstrong. He'll get two, maybe three yards. And again, they'd like to get another score, but again, if they can take three, four minutes off the clock at a first down or two, that would be also satisfactory. That's right, Bob. The other thing they've got to worry about is people like Armstrong, Potter, the late stages of the game, a game that's clearly theirs, unless for some unforeseen reason, the Spartans climb back into the game is still the way, which well, is unlikely. You do not want to have any of your starters get injured. Yeah, but you've got to figure that next week, you've got another tough opponent, perhaps a tougher opponent coming up, and you want to make sure you leave this afternoon's game with everybody healthy and everybody ready to go again next but week. You see, the thing is now, they're up by three touchdowns instead of five. What has he got to do to bring him back in? My concern is you have two guys who've been off the field. They've cooled down a little bit. You know, you've got a few of them been off the field. Now they've got to come back in there. But they are of a strong pedigree. It's second down and 13. Deep handoff goes and getting very little yardage on the play. I believe that was, uh, is that Ortiz or Warden? I suppose. Yeah, that's, that's Warden. He'll get about a yard or two and he'll make a third down and about 11 as the ball goes to the 45-yard line. Inspired defense there by the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West. As that time, they pretty much clogged all the holes right up the middle. Did not allow much of the game, if any at all. So third down, let's see if they try to go. Let's see if Potter calls home number here. Gives the roll up and see if he uh, tries to carry it inside. Everybody in tight. Third and ten. Now it's a deep handoff. Carrying the ball is Warden. They're content to melt some clock. Wyoming Valley will get the ball back. There's still nine minutes to go in this fourth quarter. So, again, Wyoming Valley holds as they kept the basic. Three plays up the middle. Nothing fancy. Let's melt a minute, at least a couple, three minutes off the clock. And now they'll punt the ball away. And you got to think the Wyoming Valley is going to try and come with some type of a block here. That's right, and uh, special teams, and you know, this is something that Coach Petten obviously wants to work on as well, uh, yeah, realizing how an important component this is of a successful game plan. Got to have some good special teams. Here's the punt team. Jarrett gets a good snap. He gets it away. Another, not as good as the last one, but it'll take a deep a sideways bounce and it'll roll dead at about the 21-yard line as uh, Wyoming Valley smartly allowed that ball exactly. to bounce. Exactly. I wanted to point that out. You could see the player begin to move towards the ball and said, uh oh, wait a minute, it's going to fall short. Coverage team is down. I'm not even going to chance this one. In fact, he didn't want to touch it, didn't want to risk that fumble, and as a result, made the right decision. Not. Again, you have eight and a half minutes to go in regulation. This is still not in the in the bag yet. There are three touchdowns up are the Bucks. This is a big possession. And the Bucks starting defense is back into the game again. Man in the slot, back to pass, pumps, looks, throws, he'll 
throw it up, and it's going to be way out of bounds. The coverage was there. Yeah, coverage was there, especially in the secondary. Slotek had a little bit of time, but defensively, the Bucks formed a nice pocket, a nice shell, so Zlatek had no option to run, and he recognized that, and he figured, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to throw the ball away. Instead of deliberately well, throwing away and taking intentional grounding, he smartly goes for the sideline just in case a receiver happens to break free. Right. Once again, showing great maturity in the decision-making pro uh, process by this young quarterback. Backs in the eye behind Zlatka. On second down, handoff to the deep back. Breaking the tackle, coming to the outside. He'll get five, six, seven yards. A nice carry on the play by Mac Jones as the Bucks looking for the pass didn't uh, did, didn't have the uh, run stop, and it's a nice game. I'll talk about, you know, it's unfortunate the uh, Spartans will lose a slot deck to graduation, but this Matt Jones appears to be a real future leader next year for the Spartans. He's a junior, and I'll tell you, comes back too. he can run, he can catch, he can fly, he can defend. He's a pretty good all-around athlete, and obviously Coach Cantafio uh, will have a nucleus of a good team to come back next year and have another opportunity to get into the PIAA playoffs. James Mack carries the ball. He will be close to the first down. It is a first down. So they continue to but move the ball at this late stage of the game. But what the Bucks are saying is, yeah, if you're going to score fine, you're going to do it eight uh, yards at a time, right. six yards at a time. Because by the time you put the ball in the end zone, we don't want to allow the big play. There's seven and a half minutes to go right now. If you score again, fine, but you're not scoring with more than five minutes to go on that scoreboard. Prevent defense, they call it, I guess. First and ten. Now back in the shotgun. Throwing it deep, looking for a man. It's too long. It's too long. He broke it back, but I tell you, actually a nice play by Warden. Close to a holding situation. But what <laughs> happened was Warden actually had position. He was actually the holding against the Spartans. Holding against the Spartans. It'll take it back ten more, and you wonder if they'll take the play or just take. Are they going to take the play? But what happened was Warden had the position. He had the deep position when the ball was thrown. The man broke in, who was number five, that was uh, Frank Yash, broke past him. Well, Warden, did he ran, but he sort of ran a little slower. So Yash actually ran into Warden. Warden has to exactly what I'm calling. The back judge is not going to make that call. Holland, red number 53, repeat first down. And absolutely you want to take that penalty because it is a 10-yard penalty. It puts him back to the 15, and all that huffing and puffing to get that last first down is negated by the holding penalty. So now they still have 85 yards to go. First and ten. Strong right formation. Man in the slot. Quick pass. Almost tipped. Now, oh, the ball's on the ground. They're going to call it incomplete. No. No, they call it incomplete. And a good call because he never had possession of it. That's right. But a close call again. As you can see, the Spartans continue to apply the pressure even in the closing minutes of this afternoon's contest. 7-15 left to go. And the Bucks continue to hold on to that lead. 35-14. So they tried that quick look. Now here it is. Now let's see if he has it. He has it. And he does. Well, not. He has it. He turns around. They're saying he never had possession. It's a tough, tough call. call there. Deep handoff and Armstrong. Uh-uh. Not a Nothing chance. Doing. Nothing doing. It's as if the Bucks are saying, okay, you scored two off our second team. Here come our big boys in there. You score against us now, you can own it. Because the first team defense has not allowed the Spartans into the end zone. The second team defense has allowed the, the, the two scores that come against uh, a lot of second teamers who don't get as much playing time, obviously. But Armstrong back in there, Potter back in there, O'Hearn back in there, Warden back in there. And it's third down and 20 yards to go. 27 to go, I beg your pardon. Back to pass, Latte. The fire intercepted, and it's going to be a touchdown for Jacob Blumgren. And it's that easy. <laughs> intercepted, Jacob Blumgren takes it in, and good night, Wyoming Valley West. That's the big play, and once again, it was pressure up front, defensive line, and Zlatek trying to force it into the situation, and good positional defensive coverage in the secondary allowed Blumgren to read that play, come up with the interception, and take a look at the Bucks sideline. Is celebrating. This is a real celebratory mood here on this side of the field, Bob, as Blumgren, for all well, practical purpose, has sealed the victory. And once again, I, admit, I, I am honored to say touchdown Blumgren. Only this time it's Jacob. 
Kick is up by Patterson. It's good. And with 6.27 to go, it's 42 to 14, as Julius Irving would say, of no. <laughs> anyway, that's right. As you see some of the, uh, the crowd, and yes, uh, we were just talking the truck. Some of you may remember my erstwhile partner, Bob Lang. Bob Lang used to say around this time, folks, it's time to go to the utensil drawer <laughs> and find the fork, because we got to stick it in Wyoming Valley West. They're done. <laughs> so. They might be done for this year, Bob, but you can expect the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West to be back next year, as we expect the Bucks to be back next year as well. However, yep. the Bucks still have, I believe, a lot of season left. Uh, they, got, they got at least one game left in them, it looks like, and hopefully two, as they will play the winner of the Central Dauphin uh, Whitehall game for the Eastern Championship. And, of course, as you probably all know by now, Altoona, who uh, many figured were to be the favorites to go to the Western, uh, as the Western finalist, they were defeated by Erie McDowell. So if the, when the finals are played at Altoona, it will not be a home game for one of the teams. Patterson kicks it off. He kicks it low, and it hits an up man, and it'll bounce around free. Oh, a lot of people around there. And it will be Wyoming Valley West ball with 6.22 to go in regulation, 42-14. to 14. Central Bucks West, Jacob Blumgren, I didn't mention what a nice place. I've talked about this for, before. Defensive backs will hide sometimes. Quarterback will look for his own areas. Defensive back will read the quarterback's eyes, wait until he's about to deliver the ball, and then move in. He's standing out there, but the quarterback just doesn't see him. He's hiding in, in coverage. When he threw that ball, I, I happened to see Blumgren. Blumgren, all he had to do was catch the ball, and he did, because there was nobody who was going to catch him. He stepped in intercepted the ball perfectly, gets the touchdown, and again, now you see uh, the first team is out, the second team will come back in again, because at this point the game is well ahead. They call, I believe the Bucks have called a timeout to talk to the second team. You see Coach Mike, assistant head coach Mike Carey, will send his troops out, and again, Dave Edwards will come in, there's Jacob Blumgren once again. Uh, you see uh, Sean Michael Johnson is in the game now. Uh, Polen is in the game. Dustin Picciotti, you're going to hear a lot from Dustin Picciotti. Dustin Picciotti has come in in relief and has shown that he is the heir apparent to Dave Armstrong. And again, the handoff goes and carrying it for good yardage and then brought down by Jacob Lundgren. Amazing what an interception touchdown will do for you as Jacob is fully into this game, delivering Matt, a pretty punishing hit on that play. Matt Jones. Uh, Tommy White. I mean, Tommy Wright is really, as, as I said on Sportsline uh, last week, a lot of people get all over Tommy because he was a CB East graduate. He played for CB East. And oh, you bleed red, white, and blue and all this. There is no bigger supporter of West at this point than Tommy Wright. He said, he said, I can't see him losing all the way to the state championship game. He said, they're just so powerful, so strong. And he said, if you want to look at a player who will be a great player, look at Dustin Picciotti. Look at Jacob Blumgren. Two great families, two great football families. Of course, Paul Picciotti played for West, and we know Travis played for, uh, uh, was a great player for West. These two kids, this is the future of Buck football. You're going to see a lot of them next year. Backs in the eyes, lot to hands the ball off. Getting the first down on the, on the short yard carry is Matt Jones, but all that does is move the clock down a little more. We're down to 514 to go in regulation. Ball at the 40, 48 yard line, 49 yard line. It will be a first down for the Spartans, but at this point, as I say, that Blumgren's, as you see this, the uh, Mike Carey yelling out his encouragement. This LaTeX will go under center again. He rolls to the right. He's looking. He'll throw. It's going to be down. It's going to be a little bit too deep. Oh boy! Incomplete. As for all the world, I thought that was too deep. I'll tell you what LaTeX shows me, and it's the mark of a great quarterback. The ability to throw the sideline pass. I mean, there are professional football teams, as we'll take a look at this replay, and then he sees you, watch Padovan, stretches out, and he almost makes a great play. There are professional football teams that have those quarterbacks who can throw the sideline pass. Good timing and good touch on the pass, yeah. yeah I can think of one team in green who's had two quarterbacks well. for some time who can't throw a sideline pass. <laughs> at any rate. Handoff goes and carrying the ball for some decent yardage is James Mack. 
But again, all that does is to uh, succeed to bring the clock down. And you look at the way the Wyoming Valley's going to the huddle, I think they just as soon would get this game over with. They've got to be satisfied, more than satisfied with their season. Two oh, yeah. years ago, they were a yeah. doormat. Yeah. Everybody looked forward to playing Wyoming Valley. They bring in the uh, Contapio. He brings in a whole new program, recruits the best athletes in the state. They're 12-0 and 0 this year. They'll finish up 12-1. and 1. And I'll tell you what, they probably have exceeded everybody's expectations. Lots of back to pass. He throws. He throws the corner and he wins it. He makes a loss. He makes a he makes a gain out of a potential loss. Well, and I was going to say he lost yardage, but he didn't. He gained about three yards and yeah. just on great. Yeah. That's a great sense. player. He can take a losing situation, make something out of it. But uh, you know what's uh, the the Spartans? This afternoon is going to be a little bit hard for them to take initially. It's going to be a tough loss, 42 to 14. But they're going to leave this afternoon realizing that hey, we were in this game. And should the Bucks continue on the track that they're destined to go on in a couple of weeks, the Spartans are going to say, you know what? We stayed in the game with perhaps the best team, not only in the state, but perhaps one of the best teams in the country. And this loss will not be as bitter. As a matter of fact, Coach Cantafio will turn that around for his kids and say, wait a minute. You see how good you guys done? We're this much away from it's being a, a better it's club. A exactly. Block and it gives motivation for kids that are coming through your, your local midget football, your middle high school program, and some of the younger players returning in that off season, pound the weights, start working and out, get in shape, and it really helps to solidify a program. And you liken it to what Mike Petton Jr. is doing at North Exactly. Penn, and there what he did at William Tenney right. prior to you that. Build in he steps. comes into programs that didn't know how to win. win. Exactly. And he teaches, the first thing you have to teach in a program yep. is how to win. They already know how to play. And the Bucks are a perfect example. And, and what I like to point out sometimes is, Bob, when the Bucks have a shortcoming, when they drop a ball, a fumble, or they have a miscue on special teams, offense, defense, whatever, they're able to maintain the focus, come around, and rectify the situation, and turn it into a plus instead of a negative. That's a sign of a team that knows how to win just like some teams find a way to lose some teams find a way to win and Jones carries the ball he gets the first down but pays for it as again the picket fence slams the door on him after about two yard gain it'll be a first down but again the clock under four minutes to go in regulation they're that close to going to the eastern finals are the Bucks of CB West slot tech still in a quarterback backs in the eye Slotek, off play action. He rolls. He gets away from one man. Does a nice job to do that. He'll roll away. He'll run for the fur and run for the sticks. And he'll get about five yards. I'll tell you, the only thing that keeps slot and they say he's a Division One candidate. I can see that with the arm. The only thing that might be keep him from playing in a big Division One program, it might be his size. He's only six feet six one. Six feet one. You look at his size. That could be a problem if you get into the the Penn States or the well, Syracuse and so forth. The thing forth. is, you've got to look at a kid's ability, and this is one of the areas in football that I've never understood. There's been many great talents that have been, in, that been overlooked and thrown by the wayside because of this size factor or speed factor. One thing is clear. The kid is a great athlete. He has natural ability. If Penn State, Ohio State, somebody doesn't want him, a coach that's smart, a coach that has a caliber of a Cantafio or a Petten that's in a Division well, One school is going to take that kid that everyone else rejected look, look, and he's going to make something happen out you of look, it. You look at a Doug Flutie who's five foot eight. The big schools in Boston College took a shot at him. Look at it. Now, he never made it in the NFL, but guess what? He but just won his third Canadian football league doesn't matter, but I believe if somebody would have made the commitment to work with him, That's especially right. in today's NFL, with a lack of quarterbacks, and I mean a lack of quarterbacks, somebody could be making it. But no, he has an opportunity to play. He's effective. He plays exciting football passing. He makes things happen. He's making a very good living up there in the Canadian football league. Absolutely, lake. absolutely. So you see, he's law tech, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking at him. He is by far, by far, the best throwing quarterback I've seen this year. And I think, Bob, the point that you just made, his ability to throw, his ability to move her, and the way we pointed out a couple of times, his ability to make intelligent decisions and that's a play right there. quickly, as demonstrated right there. He was buried. With that talent. He'll be able to overcome his lack of size because he won't stand in the pocket paralyzed like we see happen many times. He'll make a decision and he'll make 
chances are if he's making the right decision at this level, he will become more confident and mature as he goes, if he so desires. You know, this part of the country, of course, is part of the state country. Of course. And you got to wonder if Joe doesn't have his eye on him. Now he's back in the shot. And we have a side. Let's see what we have. I think we may have... Have Not having seen Penn State too often, but it's obvious that this kid's talent and ability is something that should be welcomed with open arms Dead at ball. Penn State. Ball start. Well, you know what? Go. Go for it. He reminds me a lot of Travis Blumgren. Travis Blumgren could throw, he could run, he was strong, he was smart, and guess where he's playing? Now, he's not playing quarterback, but he's playing at Penn State. Slot tech, back to pass. Throws it in a timing pattern, has a man. Ball sits up in the air. Almost a little set. high for Padavan. So with 2.01 to go in regulation, Zlatek trying to get that little crossing pattern again. He had it, but he put it a little too high. But what he did do again, he didn't zip it. He put a touch on it. Put a touch on it. Might have been just a tad high. But I'll tell you, CB West going to come away from this game saying, hey, we beat him. We beat him uh, big time. But they got a major quarterback there. Second down, 15, after the penalty and the incomplete pass. Backs in the eye, back the pass goes Lotte. Throws a short pass behind the receiver, but a nice catch by Mack. He'll take it down inside the 10 to about the six yard line. The clock will continue to run. It was not a first down. A buck 45 to go in regulation, 42 to 14. Central Box West, well on their way to the Eastern Finals. And a well-deserved earned berth in the Eastern Finals of the PIAA Quad A playoffs. And as we said, it's uh, it's been an interesting season for the Bucks because they really weren't challenged that much on the field and they've really had to keep their eye focused on the postseason so as not to get themselves in trouble or get off track as they continue to climb towards the postseason finals. Down to the one yard line goes Jones on the run. It'll be a first and goal. And again, CB West content to let uh, Wyoming Valley move the ball. They'd like to keep them out of the end zone, but 42 to 14, they can afford to be gracious. It's Lottek under center. First and goal, the clock running with just over a minute to go. Handoff goes and into the end zone for the touchdown with a minute one to go. Goes Mack and it'll be 42 to 20. And the extra point try will be coming up. Let's see if they go for two here. They don't, McCormick will come in, he'll kick it. Spartan fans showing a lot of spirit and enthusiasm even in the closing minutes as their team puts on their third touchdown of the afternoon. And those kids deserve a round of applause despite being, I should say, blown out in the first half and the Bucks pretty much dominated throughout the beginning of the second half. It would have been very easy for the Spartans to just throw in the towel and give it up. No, they've kept their nose to the grindstone. They kept focused and they continue to plug away. And when the Bucks made some substitutions, Slotek was able to gear his team up and maintain that offensive engine that they had started earlier in the first half. The only difference being they didn't score in the first half. The scoring came in the second half. And as a result, the Spartans will be left with something to look forward to for next season. But it's been left in, in, in the rear view mirror because they had the lead at 30, the 30 uh, lead, the 28 nothing lead at half. But you gotta look back. Corey Potter once again showing why he is the leader he is. I made the comment before and I'll say it again. I've seen Snyder. I've seen uh, Blumgren. I've seen it back to Matt Baggett. I've seen it to Mike Petton Jr. I've seen some of the great quarterbacks here. The, uh, the Moylan brothers, Greg and Sean. Ben, uh, all the way down the line. I've seen Putty Gilbert as a complete quarterback, as a leader all the way through. Corey Potter is the finest quarterback I have ever seen at Central Bucks West. And that, my friend, is saying a lot. Well, Bob, you don't have to say it. I think anybody that's seen any of the Bucks games, his performance speaks for itself. And when you can go on a field and make it happen, and in a situation you get yourself into where there is no alternative, you take the responsibility, namely as a quarterback, you put your head down, you start running, you go for the first the down. Potter has done that on numerous occasions. And that only outside, they'll go for it. No, oh, the ball's loose. It's anybody's ball, but I think West has got it. I think West got the ball. It is. It's West ball. Corey Potter, now in saying that, I'm not smudging the pass to the quarterback. We have had, we have, CB West has had some great, great, great quarterbacks. You go back to last year, Travis Blumgren. You go back to, to some of the great players of the past, 
Blumgren, Snyder, right down the line. They're great, but all I'm saying is that this kid is a true leader. Dave Armstrong, when did you think you would have a day where Dave Armstrong didn't carry the ball tremendously much, and yet they scored 42 points, and the reason Corey Potter showed the ability to throw the ball, Scotty Warden had the day of his life, and you see Corey Potter over the side talking to some of his friends and family. He's absolutely thrilled. I'm almost choked up about it myself. Obviously within there, he is not a quarterback now, and the quarterback now for CB West, of course, is Drew Tillman. As Florian is heading down to the field, he will talk to some of the people, and it's a delay of game with 53 Send seconds ball. to go. ball, delay of game, wait, yeah, first of down. Of course, the officials have to get the one last flag in there. I think they're gonna have to go get new flags after this. The other ones, these are worn out. It's been a flag filled game. Although the second half hasn't been quite as bad as the first. As I say, I guess somebody must have advised them at halftime that they're not being played by the flag. But actually, they've done a pretty good job of controlling the game. As darkness starts to set in, this is a light field with lights, but the lights are not on. And with 53 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, we have another flag. I'm sorry, it wasn't the final flag of the game. I think it's going to go against West again. This is the second team offense it's in, so you're going to see our third team in some cases. Good ball, encouragement, uh, no, win, I'm sorry. Still first down. I'm wrong. I am wrong once again, which is not probably uh, not the last time today. Encouragement by Wyoming Valley West, who also has a lot of second pl team players in there. And on first down, Tillman hands the ball off and carrying the ball for some decent yardage. I believe that may be Dusty Pichotti. And it is Dustin Pichotti with the carry. We're inside 40 seconds to go in regulation. Clock will continue to run. This very well could be the last play of the game. Bucks in no hurry to come out to the line of scrimmage. They lead 42 to 21. Tillman. Hands the ball off to Pichotti. He'll carry it close to the first down. And that will be the final play of the game. The clock running down, 10 seconds to go in regulation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Central Bucks West Bucks will be playing for the Eastern Championship in a couple of weeks as they come to the middle of the field, a 42 to 21 winner over Wyoming Valley West, who was a game opponent, but just not the match for the mighty Bucks of Central Bucks West. Final score, 42 for CB West. 21 for Wyoming Valley West. The teams line up at midfield to shake hands. We will take a quick break and we will be right back. Don't you go away. We got post game activities coming up. always so busy. When he's not working, he's a fireman. He does a lot of cool stuff, like putting out fires and saving people's houses. He even rescued my best friend. I call him Smokey. Isn't he a cutie? I'm glad Scott's my neighbor. We are back at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Bob Friedman, along with Florian Kemp, who is right now on the field. As the Bucks, you saw Coach Mike Petten looking around. You see the Bucks standing at midfield. He's talking to the team. He has a few good words to say. And a big 42 to 21 win in this Eastern semifinal game against the previously undefeated Wyoming Valley West. Uh, we'll get to uh, Florian as soon as he can uh, get to somebody to talk to a little bit. But the game really was put out of, out of reach in the last minute and a half of the first half. 
three great drives. One to start the game after CB West kicked off. Wyoming Valley was unable to move the ball. They punted the West, and a great job by Mark Zlotek, uh, who was absolutely a spectacular player. Everything advertised Mark Zlotek. Pumped the ball out of bounds at the 15-yard line. She's not out of bounds. I caught my potter. He nailed it to 15. They started the 15, a little bit of a slow start. Flags flying, but they were able to move the ball out. Big pass play to Scott Warden, and that will come back to haunt Wyoming Valley all day long. Warden catching a ball going 40, 45 yards down to the 14-yard line of Wyoming Valley. And from there, it was the Dave Armstrong show. Armstrong carrying it down to the one and then taking it into the end zone with 5.09 to go in the first quarter. Patterson's extra point made it 7 to nothing. It stayed that way until...